And there we go. We're currently live. Wait. All right. So welcome, everyone. This is Making a Case for Karna's Revenge. Uh, this is, as it says, inspired by the Fraud Crew. They made a similar video for Street Fighter the Movie, another really obscure fighting game that has been getting a lot of attention. And uh, I thought this would be a good idea to kind of explore Karna's Revenge and, you know, how the game works, how all the characters fit into it. Because I think this game kind of uh, doesn't get enough credit for like how uh, innovative it is as a Street Fighter II clone goes. I would definitely say it's a little bit beyond a Street Fighter II clone, but it is also all the ultimate, the quintessential Street Fighter II clone. God, I thought the, I thought the icons on that slide started Legally glowing. Is one. I got freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I saw like color. I was like, wait, whoa, how'd you do that? All right. Magic. Also, uh, thank you, Crazy Lee, for the raid. Crazy Lee's another, like, you know, supporter of the scene. Uh, she streamed, she helped us set up the match, you know, for the upcoming tournament. So thank you so much for that. Anyway, I figure it's time to do some introductions. So uh, first of all, I'm Polar Bear. I, you know, stream a variety of fighting games. I work on wikis. Obviously, I play them. But I feel like, you know, it, recently I haven't been playing as much. But I've been trying to get back on since it is Car November, after all, and this game is great. And you know, you kind of don't forget how to play it. It might take a while to like get the input consistency down, but I think you don't forget sort of your goal, right? It's like riding a bike. Car playing Car Novs is like riding a bike. Exactly. Uh, I guess we can do this in order. Griffy Bones, if you want to start. Hello, happy Car November, everybody. I want to make it, I, I want to try and make it like an actual holiday greeting. I said that literally as as I went to locals, as I walked into locals, like a weirdo. Nobody responded to it, but I <laughs> yep. did say it. Hi, everybody. I'm Griffy Bones, Rise of Griffy Bones, um, fighting game uh, player, tournament player, content creator, uh, play a bunch of variety of different games, a lot of obscure stuff. Virtual Fighter specialist, I play a lot of Virtual Fighter. More importantly, I brought car knobs to locals yesterday, so that makes me very important. I did my due diligence for November. But oh, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely a huge, huge fan of this game in particular, and I'm excited to talk about it, and glad I'm uh, on the panel. Nice. All right, Golden Shades. Well, so I play many games, but this, I would say, is uh, probably my favorite fighter game of all time. Uh, when I talk to people, I tell them, you know, Play it, play it like a, like you're playing Street Fighter 2 or a similar game. But, you know, I always say it's like the best version of, um, of a Street Fighter 2 clone that you can get. Because it's so easy to pick up and then you can get creative. The input interpreter lets you do very interesting things with the characters. And so it's just a game where you continue to find new things every day, right? Uh, so I don't know. And I, I would say... Uh, I enjoy posting many clips, uh, either from from good players from Mikado or from my own matches to Twitter. And it, 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 occasionally they they gain some numbers, but mostly I just enjoy doing it because I, I like to to show off the game. Yeah, you made like some. There was an interesting edit you made about like you kind of did the uh, high fight sort of approach where you yeah. like, highlighted a bunch of stuff that Young Me was doing in a match. I thought that was really like, cool. Yeah, I enjoyed. I enjoy doing that a lot. Uh, I, I I admit that it was a ripoff, but uh, I thought it was fitting for what I wanted to show. Yep. I, I and, like uh, your um little yeah. moments of the day. Golden Shades on Twitter does little like Car November moments of the day or for each day of the of the month so far. And they've done right. a lot of interesting and cool clips. So. I admit that I need yeah, to I catch up on that, that but uh, I mean, I appreciate you, you don't need to do it every day. It's 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 it could be a lot, but, no, but yeah. even if it's but not, I like the like, idea. Even if yeah, it's not like fair. every day, yeah. uh, by the hour. I mean, at least I want to catch up and show <laughs> thirty clips for November. Yeah, I mean, and... this thing, this is a whole progress, <laughs> right? We're all for, kind that's of. The goal for ne <laughs> that's the goal for next year: is one hour on the hour, <laughs> every hour Please. of next November. We have a Karnov clip. It's like drug addicts <laughs> back in the <laughs> Okay. I'll... Yeah, we're all like trying to figure this out as we go along. I think that's true for all of us but the whole like the passion comes through i think and that's what's really important i don't think twitter will even be here by next year by next no, well, oh, boy, yeah, 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 you gotta you gotta figure out uh, they, 20 and they, they just close it and it explodes 
It's I'm gonna be uh, think about it. it's gonna be on Tumblr next it. time. <laughs> yeah, that's the most oh, dynamite <laughs> shit I've ever seen. Twitter. <laughs> Anyways, God speaking damn. of that segue, I am T T T T T S D. People call me T Five. Um, I have a very long history with this game. This was the first fighting game I actually um, I took seriously online. Uh, Street Fighter Four was uh, the year where I got back into fighting games with that one, but I didn't really net play it a lot. A Karnov's Revenge on, hey, anybody here want to feel old? Uh, I would spend every weekend after high school, yes, in high school, on uh, Supercade. That shit oh, old. Oh, man. That was uh, <laughs> GGPO, but you can set it up. Because I just I couldn't port forward. I was a dumb person. You know, I was in high school. But uh, I would play Karnov every weekend. And so uh, years down the line, Polar Bear would be like, hey, man, you know, you like Karnov's Revenge. You've made, like, one of the only... Karnov's Revenge fan games I can talk about because I, I'm pretty sure there's not really a market on that, so that's cool. Like there are Karnov fan games, but and so he was like, also "Hey man, come in and say Fighters History Dynasty is great and really underrated. It so is. You it's just play fun. That I love that game, and I definitely wish more people were on it. But you know, I think a lot of people do appreciate it, but yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's it's appreciable. I but, actually wonder, um, uh, T, if I can ask you something. How did that game like shape? Uh, how you guys worked on TMNT XJL at all, or is that kind of like no, two unrelated uh, projects? No, it, it was just unrelated. It just they both kind of started around the same ish time. Mm-hmm. Fair but enough. um, yeah, and then at that point it kind of spiraled into you know I love Carnobs. I know a lot about it at a surface level at least. You know I have a fundamentally okay understanding of the game, not to the to the nitty gritty, but enough. And so I was like, I could start commentating these. And then uh, that's just kind of how it happened. That's how I got integrated, I guess, with the Cardos community again. What a bunch of like awesome people, by the way. A lot of them are are sort of interspersed across all the other uh, really, really big games on Fight Cave. But Karnovs is great because it's like this this bridge, I find. There's like people I know that play Alpha 2. It's Third Strike players. Like A lot of people kind of just, you know, gather around for Karnovs. And I think that's really cool that it's like that unifying force. That's yeah. basically my background. Most is... of what I'm known for is stuff outside of Card Huffs, funny enough. I'm a... Yeah, plus R. Big Guilty Gear <laughs> fan. Fan of the very, uh, very well-designed and very, very well conceptually thought out and shipped out character, Cliff Anderson. Nothing absurd happens with him in that game. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's basically me. Yeah, you know. Oh, and I, I fucking love Mizuguchi in this game. That's my favorite character. Like my guy. All right, uh, Lord BBH. Uh, hey, I'm Lord BBH. I I stream over on Twitch.tv slash Lord BBH. I don't really, I haven't really been doing fighting games as much lately. Usually, I just uh, stream like one credit clear attempts on old arcade games, and I'm doing like a whole, a whole big Neo Geo series where I'm going through every Neo Geo game. But uh, I do, you know, I do sometimes play play fighting games online. And my history with this game, like I'm. If we're going to talk about how old we are, I was actually uh, like a freshman in high school when this game like came out, and my local arcade got it, but but nobody played it. But I thought the game, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting, but you know, the computer just kind of beat the shit out of me because computers kind of brutal in this game. But I thought, I, I I thought it seemed like a an interesting game. I, it was just a shame I had nobody to play play it with. And then, like in two thousand eight, before. Like before Supercade like existed, like this is around the time GGPO started up, and GGPO didn't have support for this yet. There was like a a peer to peer version of uh, Final Burn Alpha that could, could kind of do rollback like the same way. And like a friend of mine, like he saw like the uh, uh, some random video on YouTube of like a Karnov mirror match, and we were just laughing at the all the balloons. And he's like, "I want to play this shit," and I'm like, "All right." And so we just started like. Oh, is that is that the homogeneous one? No, this was before homogeneous. Oh, it was okay. some. I don't remember who uploaded it, but it was some. It was some random Karnov mirror match that was on YouTube around like two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Oh, that's. Funny. And then I would yeah. Say, uh, sorry, not to interrupt, but I would say in a similar vein, like one of my big introductions to this game was also a Karnov mirror on YouTube. <laughs> I think it was a homogeneous clip. But it was one in particular where they just did balloon over and over again. And <laughs> I think it's interesting how that is often a lot of people's reintroduction to Karnovs, or at least playing it like online. Oh, yeah. Like that. 
so that's like kind of how I I got started, like just jumping into this game, and then like GGPO eventually added support for it, but also yeah, Supercade, which later became 2DF. So played on played on that a bit, but then I kind of I kind of fell out of it because like uh, the version of Final Burn Alpha they were using just ran like shit on Windows Seven. And I could never, I could never get like I, I was really frustrated with all the frame drops and input drops. So I just kind of, kind of stopped playing online for like well, years and years and years. And then once, once Fight K two came out and used like a new version of Neo, of Neo Final Burn, I was like, okay, Ned, this is this is actually good. I can actually play this game online again without feeling like super duper frustrated at all the drops. Mm, uh, you've and also so, like the- organized a bunch of offline tournaments, right? Oh, we did run a uh, tournament at, at Evo 2019, but that was oh, okay. That was pretty much it. That was pretty much uh, enough. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, there was, there wasn't like really, other than this uh, this friend of mine who I've lost all contact with. Uh, <laughs> um, there isn't really like a a strong scene locally for it. But then again, I haven't really uh, been going out to the local fighting game get-togethers lately, so that's kind of on me. But I'd have to like bring a bring a laptop and get just spread the the uh, the gospel of Carnov, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Do you go in there and be like, "Happy <laughs> Carnovember"? Mm. Well, well, you would r- be surprised to see how many people enjoy playing the game, even though they they don't say it. Like, I know that many Japanese players who they play other games like Third Strike, but they also like it. I know that MOV plays the game. I know that Sugiyama yeah. plays the game, right? So I many. Got to play a, I got to play a first to five with MOV back in like Evo two thousand. Right. I remember that. Two thousand eleven. Oh, that's hilarious. And, that's great. And and, and, uh, and getting back to what was said earlier Wait, about like who the, do they uh, play? Who does MOV play? He played uh he played Karnov, I think. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> and, and and like getting back to the the whole the whole sound design thing, it was kind of funny because like we we kind of set this up and I had to go like find him after like uh like finals had played out for like Street Fighter Four. And he's just uh standing there in the ballroom. And I just see him, and I just go, "Big potato!" And then he's going, "Balloon!" And we're just acting <laughs> out the moves in the in the middle of the, the ballroom. That's great. <laughs> That's just how great I think the yep. sound design is to this game. And I wanted to yep. say, and I was saying to these guys a little bit before, is that I feel like the sound, particularly for this game, I just love, and, and I just really love it so much. But I think it's just very iconic in a way that's hard to really describe or replicate, mm-hmm. and just like. I can play a match of it so vividly in my head, and it's very yeah. even repetitive. It, like especially at the top level, it's a lot of these characters spamming a lot of the same special moves that are very, very good, and they just say the same thing over and over again. But mm-hmm. every time I enjoy it, and I enjoy listening to it, and I can just play it in my head. Big tornado, wheel kick, balloon, like God. It, <laughs> Just even the crunchiness of the compression and the arcade sound, it just something about it's just so it's magical for the time. I think the sound design is actually really good. Like, yeah, uh, the voices are clear and uh, the punch sounds are really satisfying. I know that I I really like doing combos in this game because of the sound design, and there are games that turn me off because of the sound design. Like, Breakers, I think it's a great game. But unfortunately, I think the sound is like really <laughs> a, rough. A few characters, especially you know, uh, uh, yeah, PL, <laughs> Condor, PL. Uh, Alcyon to a degree. <laughs> Every time I hear PL say anything, I'm like, oh, like their voices, uh, but like they are, they're so bit crushed. Dude, that guy is talking yeah. through a sock underwater, and I, I think I, that's I, a good, a good comparison to bring up because I'm also thinking, of, and also thinking of like old homogeneous clips, like. In a similar comparison, there's Maharal, or how you say it, and they're the character in Baker's Revenge that like blows up big, kind of like a balloon. But like the uh, the sound for that is like weird and obnoxious, and I can't even really remember what they say off the. Aluno. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it's just, it is. It's not like, the same, you know. <laughs> it's just not even. Yeah, it's not very clear. Where just the car- the cardov is just like. There's a Balloon. confidence to it, it's you know. Very <laughs> eternal. It's it's been so many years, but it's still just everyone gets it. It's a balloon. He he inflates himself. No, so we didn't even really know for a while that um, he it was like like a secret lore thing that oh he's wearing a suit that he can inflate, and that's the reason why he can do that. I think that's, that's just why a, a the, joke. <laughs> the giant scar, yeah. But All right. 
I just, yeah, I just want to move ahead with this so we can talk a little bit about the game here. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's cool, right? You can you can go on and on about just like how fun this game is, and I think that says a lot for it. But as far as the mechanics go, right? This is, I feel like uh, even like Street Fighter Two is not necessarily the best comparison, just because you've got uh, chain combos and you've got a back dash. So in that way, it's kind of like Fatal Fury Special, obviously with no lanes though. So the uh, like offense is very strong in this game, right? That's like the main thing about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, important to clarify because there are some games where you can backdash and do actions out of them, but this is not one of them. Backdashing is like one continuous action. You move back and then you finish, but you cannot do anything in between. Mm -hmm. Um. Something just to playing this again, and playing it, I was kind of showing it to someone who hadn't played in a while yesterday. Is that it's very old school, like it's and it's a very old game, but something about the way it feels just also feels very modern and very clean and very well put together. And something about it just, I don't know, feels so easy to pick up and, and play in a way that I think many games it, it's easy to pick up and play, but also very fun and fast and like in a way many games yeah. try to be but can't really accomplish and stuff like yeah. it's got that that old game sensibility where you had like a lot of a lot of movement speed being able to like walk walk uh, forward and backward like you had like good movement speed on that and when you press a button like you have buttons that have like pretty good range and come out really fast and that just yep. that just combines to like an an enjoyable experience to be able to just jump in and press some buttons and it just feels good to to play a character yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of new games. It's like you've got to sort of discover what makes a normal really good. Like there's a lot of information you've kind of got to parse in, in understanding. Like the frame data is really important. The, the reach, the speed, is it disjointed? But like in these games, usually what you see is kind of what you get. It all feels really fast and snappy. That was kind of the point, right? It's kind of funny, uh, like because in uh, a lot of versions of Street Fighter Two, it's well, first of all, everything has got like some disjoint, but like some moves don't have very much. Uh, in this game, everything's like pretty disjointed while it's active, but especially on heavy buttons, the recovery has this like big open with punish uh, hitbox yep. right there. So that kind of changes how you approach things as well. It's less about like normal to normal interactions and more about like uh, your you know timing and spacing. And I think that kind of helps bring the cast together in addition to the chain combos because like everyone's got pretty simple to figure out uh, bread and butters that everyone, you know, can confirm into a knockdown with no trouble. Yeah, this is a game that makes me wonder, why doesn't uh, any version of Street Fighter 2 let you, I don't know, like, do the repeated change in chains into, into a combo? Because it's only very specific versions that let you do that. Yeah, CPS yeah. one chains, right? And they're like very specific rules. That's the fun thing I think about this game that makes it easy to pick up and play. Is it felt when I played it, it was like it let me do stuff that I thought a fighting game should let me do. Yeah, and it just let me kind of play the way I wanted to play. Where it's right. like I could play Ray. It's like just chain lights into a heavy, into a special that knocks down and is also safe on block. And so <laughs> you just feel very safe and confident and powerful. And that's the thing is I think a lot of characters. There's definitely a lot of uh, complex characters if you want to go for really crazy stuff or play some of the more obscure characters. But then I think it's very easy to get in and be effective if you play some of the more easy and effective characters. Yeah. Oh, and I also like, I kind of want to say the a good point you made at the very bottom is that being able to delay the special cancel, I think just that very simple fact of having that simple chain system and being able to delay those specials gives you a lot of like uh, uh, leeway offense and kind of like uh, frame trap and block stun opportunities so it's very easy uh, and effect to make simple and effective pressure and stuff yeah like that. it's both like yeah. it allows you to both when you're like picking it up to kind of uh, make things happen and then it's also like once you're at that high level you can kind of use it deliberately to throw people off, yeah. 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 There are many mix-ups that are created when you just delay your special. For example, Lee can do that. Uh, Karnov can get some charge for his kicks, right? So it's very important, and it also makes, uh, like you said, for the people who are starting, it makes many combos easier to pull off, right? 
pretty easy in general. You just if you know how to do basic fighting game motions like quarter circles, half circles, you're going to have a very easy time doing anything in this game. Yeah, there are some small exceptions that we'll cover later. Uh, there's also like hidden moves that every character, well, almost every character has that have pretty convoluted motions that were actually part of like a uh, kind of part of the game's marketing that they were like to be revealed in magazines, which is something that you can't do nowadays, right? You know, everything's <laughs> so found funny. out I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> the day of, if not leaked online, you know, weeks, months before. Yeah, people nowadays was... would data data mine the inputs to those moves. Yeah, there was there was a lot of that in the early '90s where special move motions like weren't weren't really uniform yet, and so they tried to make their their games like a little a little more mysterious by giving them like weird motions. Like Fatal Fury Two had the the desperation moves; they weren't like immediately obvious, and they had oh, they had Fatal they had pretty the pretty word. messed up it's motions. Like you might see the the CPU do something. And it's like, oh, how do I do that? But like, it's not an immediately obvious motion. Like, at the time, like Terry's power guys are like, you know, just fireball backwards, down back, forge, and then B and C yeah. together, like stuff like that. It was, it was not immediately obvious. So yeah, like they were trying to like push those for for magazines for later reveals. Yeah, I yeah. Fatal Fury Three is an even better example. You had to like input a cheat code to even access certain moves <laughs> in the game. Oh, I remember wow. that shit. That's funny. Wow. Yeah, no, really. I, wanna, I, <laughs> I also want to say, just as someone who like explores a lot of older and more obscure games, I really hate that aspect about the '90s because sometimes I will try a game and I will open the move list and it will have question mark, question mark, question mark for the input, and it's like, oh, maybe you can figure it out yourself, or it'll have where you can fill it in in the manual, like yourself, and you're just supposed to mash around the buttons and figure it out. It's a command grab that only comes out on, on hit. Oh my god, it makes me very annoyed. But I don't want to derail too much my yeah. Uh, yeah. obscure weirdo ways. But yeah, so <laughs> let's go to the next one. Well, <laughs> so, yeah, but so I mean, the, uh, yeah. Also, wait, the, the thing about the, uh, the chain system, being able to chain lights into heavies, I think this might have been like the first fighting game to like make that a feature, because I can't really think of another game. Like, the old, the old CPS 1 Street Fighter 2s have that that glitch where like Ryu, Ken, and Guile can do like a short into fierce or whatever, but that like wasn't it, really it was, one chains, yeah. But but this game being able to chain light attacks into into heavy into heavy attacks, like I think this was the first fighting game that had something like that. And then Capcom just kind of kind of ran with it afterwards in in Darkstalkers, which came out later that year, and then X Men: Children of the Atom and all that, and just kind of yeah. went went nuts with with the whole combo systems because the fighters yeah. history dynamite was 1994 was it like early half I early say? like yeah april i think mm -hmm. a and couple it's, months it's after to, super street fighter 2 turbo it's kind of good to bring up just how innovative and effective this game was because also if you don't know this game is kind of a landmark game in just fighting games as a genre because i think Capcom this can did it. this can actually transition into the next slide but go ahead okay nice but uh yeah so Capcom did, in fact, uh, sue um, Data East at one point about this game as it was they were trying to sue them for well, the copyright infringement for as like Street Fighter 2. And so the fact that that case was uh, rejected and it didn't go through basically set the precedence for the fighting game genre and people to make Street Fighter 2 and other kind of fighting game clones. Was, and stuff. Like that was Capcom USA, right? Because I think uh, they, I, they, I think that the court it might have was... been USA. Yeah. So I also want to say, yeah, it, it's like don't blame the developers of of Capcom or a lot of people. It was just like the legal department of of yeah. Capcom trying yeah. to. It was know, USA. Uh, yeah. Control the market and really do some business stuff, but you know, in the end, we got the 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 best ending and the best timeline, I think. But um. That's yeah. another. I I just always think about that. I think I, I think this is also a very important game in terms of just like fighting game mechanics development, but also just in the history of fighting game. Yeah, and this is one of the our... main mechanics that uh, distinguish it. And this was in the original fighters history as well, but it kind of took a backseat there because a you could not chain into heavies, and b the combos kind of didn't work in that game. Yo, but, I mean, uh... they worked for about three hits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was really bad for especially Mizoguchi. You know, you couldn't really you get work any with more. That. You're kind of fucked, buddy. Uh... Nice yeah. special. Uh, <laughs> every character has got a weak point, 
they're they're pretty obvious and they'll even you know they'll the screen will flash when you hit them and they'll start flashing themselves when uh when they're one hit away from falling off so like the uh the little french flag on Jean's thigh uh Karnov's a gold necklace all that kind of stuff and this is where it gets really interesting so you'll see that note introduces mid combo interaction i think that's like one of the most interesting properties of this whole thing is that uh, you can switch between standing and crouching while being hit, and it'll obviously move where your weak spot is. Now, in some matchups, this doesn't really matter. You know, uh, Lee versus Ray, Samchai, a few characters like that, where you kind of get hit anyway. But I think like the idea is really smart. And that's yeah, a very think... early example of um, player interaction like while getting hit. And you'll yeah, see exactly. you see stuff become more popularized like that with like guilty gear and bursts and stuff like that. But then ultimately it's funny people bring that up with uh Smash and Sakurai made that video recently about how uh combos were getting too powerful and stuff like that. So that's how he kind of got the idea for Smash. So this is kind of an early proto version of that. Not really similar, but it's funny to see. And I didn't even really think about it till I honestly till I read this slide beforehand about how this was kind of the dizzy system of this game and how it's really unique to it. And it is it is kind of a dizzy system, but it's really unique to this game. And you haven't really seen a whole lot after. You've seen, like, body damage in games, but it doesn't really work the same or feel the same. And so it's definitely a, weird, a very weird system that you can get really annoyed at sometimes when your character randomly gets hit three times and then you're stunned and then you get an eat big combo but it's also very very fun and also you're usually going to be able to benefit from from it yourself depending yeah. on which character you use and but you're yeah, often it, incentivize, gonna be able to... it incentivizes usage of different normals and different special moves and in, in various situations where normally you might not have ever thought about it because of the way the weak points are positioned it should also be mentioned yeah once you lose your weak point and you get stunned you also take uh, 150 percent damage if you get hit in the weak spot again. So, in a lot of cases, you get stunned and the match is pretty much over. <laughs> yeah, like Mizuguchi's a uh, close heavy kick, right? It specifically has a use because it hits certain weak points, and that's something I remember reading about all well, months ago. And I was like, wow, that's actually really interesting because it just completely changes little pieces of your combo routing. So in a lot of ways, it's also like the precursor to things like weight-specific or hurtbox-specific combo routes that are that detailed. Pretty cool to think about. Yeah, I think it introduces a very interesting dynamic on defense because generally what happens in games is you, you get hit and then you start down backing, waiting for the other person to fuck up their combo or for the combo oh, yeah. to end. But in this case, uh, there are characters that benefit, uh, for example, standing up instead of crouching or even mid combos, for example, um, you may benefit from, uh, for example, being standing up. But the other character can change around and do a special that will hit you standing, uh, that maybe will hit also your, your DC spot. And so that way, it introduces a new mind game that you have to play around, right? And I think that's very unique for a game uh, this old, uh, a game from the Street Fighter 2. I think this was like hyper fighting era. like. That kind of that level of mind games, like I think it's really impressive and really fun to to figure out on like on the fly fighting another opponent, right? Yeah, and I also want to say I think it's good. I think you mentioned it in one of the slides, but one of the crazy things that I feel like wasn't totally figured out until recently was how you can get hit with in your weak point like once and then recover it but it takes like eight seconds and there's like no <laughs> visual indication. And yeah. so you have there's... to really be paying attention. So all of these weak point combos are not always guaranteed and stuff because sometimes you'll get hit once and then recover a prize because you weren't counting. So it's very, it also, it's like weird, but it also just, it rewards paying attention. Yeah, all. like the patience, you know, if, if you, if you, you know, get hit and decide, okay, I'm going to, play patiently for a bit that works to your benefit and, and this is also a game where like a lot of characters have strong zoning ray jean uh you know sam shy those are probably the main ones yeah so you're, there are going to be those situations often where people you won't be hitting each other sometimes you'll just kind of be 
dancing around or playing a little fireball war is... and whatnot. All right. Next up, uh, side differences. So this is not the only Neo Geo game to have, you know, player one and player two differences. But uh, these ones are pretty significant. And what you'll see, like, if you're watching tournaments is people will call for coin flips to determine who gets what side. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is something that I didn't know about until I started commentating recent tournaments. And I was like, whoa, that's really weird. I think this is something that's somewhat of a thing in KOF 98, too. I know there's uh, player-specific corner cross-ups in that game. I don't know if it's hit stun, But I know it's like player-specific corner interactions, I believe. I'd have to yes. look again. Yeah, some KOFs will have things where you'll you'll get turned around by uh, certain moves and you have to like be blocking the other way or something. But nothing that's as extreme as this whole thing with player two having one extra frame of advantage on on everything it's just that's that's so crazy to me that it went went like undiscovered for so long is, yeah. or, it, or or like people were, were keeping that shit to, it. <laughs> keeping that shit to their chest and, and the not, reason not i say it. that they knew about this is because they made different tier lists based on player one and player two so they yeah. must have oh, known really? something oh about that's that. interesting oh that's funny i'd like to see that that kind of makes i mean it mostly be like Mizuguchi, Jean, Zazie are, are better. Like, I, I remember see. seeing, but, uh, yeah. I think, Bomb, a Karnoff player, right, who made his, his yeah. uh, matchup chart that had player one and player two. And I think generally it shifted by like 0.5, not even like a whole one point, but it's still, you know, in those even matchups that happen at like with the top tiers, it's uh, pretty significant. Right. Yeah. It's, really, it's really crazy to think about, but I think a lot of players get like hang up on it and they think about it too much. And really, I think, personally speaking, I think this is only that uh, something that really only affects the like top level players, players who can do Misoguchi combos, players who can do yeah. uh, the, the Lee Poms on the corner. Like Those are the types of players that will benefit from having one side or the other. But for the average player, I think this is like like barely noticeable, I think. Uh, yeah. And it's it, also I funny, uh, sorry, I just want to say, like, I think different players also have a different idea of what side is preferable. I mean, generally, yeah. you're going to prefer player two, but I think, like, I remember someone saying that, uh, you know, it, you, you don't get any new combos on player two side. So maybe player one side is better because you actually get, like, a tangible benefit. But I think in, in the grand scheme of things, I think having that generosity on, like, the Mizoguchi links is pretty important to have right i would definitely say it's important and it is kind of an unfortunate side effect of like kind of older games like a lot of older arcade games would have this kind of glitch and you don't really see that and especially because you can really patch it but it is good to mention that it's not really the end all be all especially for all characters like a lot of characters you can play this really won't affect them a whole lot just having plus it seems like a big thing and it it definitely is that plus one but the way the game works it really uh, doesn't really affect it a whole lot because a lot of uh, most of the time because a lot of characters have good kind of answers for big frame advantage like You'll, if you play a character with a good DP, then you're going to be able to challenge that frame advantage most of the time. If you play yeah. against someone who's playing Ray or Lee or Zazzy, then they're just going to be able to threaten with their really good reversal all the time. You have really instant throws. And even also, I was thinking, you can kind of use the, the lessened frame advantage to help tick throw setups in this game, because it's kind of weird to set up tick throws um, off of frame advantage in this game sometimes. So it's definitely not the end all be all. And for characters, I would say more like Ray, where you're just kind of every combo, you're ending it in a knockdown where you're just either sweeping or you're doing the shoulder charge. It's not really going to affect you to have that much frame advantage. And you're just going to really be dominating most no, places in the screen um, with like fireballs and stuff like that. So it more definitely affects characters like Mizuguchi. I got to give again a shout out to TJ, um, my boy in Pittsburgh, who's a very, very solid, one of the best music Gucci's. But he, when he plays me uh, and plays any of us, he's like, let's do first to 10. 
but we switch sides. Let's do one where I'm on P1 and then one where I'm on P2 because it's that big for characters like Mizuguchi and stuff like that. But for a lot of characters, it's really... Even characters like Zazzy, it will affect them, but they're still going to be really, really good. Yeah, Ray, or not Ray, but um, Lee, for instance, some argue is better on player one side because of certain corner cross-ups, but sometimes Lee players opt for player two side anyways just to keep Zazzy off of it so that that combo comes out harder, yeah. Oh, uh, you, you uh, argue that he's better player one side, or you go for player two for this? I side? go for player two just so they don't get the advantage. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense, yeah. No, like, there, there, it, there's a pragmatic argument both ways. I go for player one because uh, the motions are easier on that side for me. Oh, there we go. Let's <laughs> that go. too, you know. That's, that's my reasoning, honestly. I think League, uh, from my play style, benefits from being player two, but I prefer player one because that side is just, it's just how I'm used to playing these games. Yeah. I'm used to being player one. So. Yeah, all right. At this point, we're going to get into characters now. Uh, I just want to say the difficulty thing, you know, that's not uh, definitive or anything, but I think I think it's a nice thing to kind of put out there to give people an idea of what they're getting into. And Ray is such a good beginner friendly character. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, yeah. fucking do whatever you. This character is very free for him. You know, I mean, if you've ever seen uh, Moon Master play, you get an idea of, like, just how. <laughs> How Dude, free you can approach various I, game concepts with this I character. I am never going to get tired of that clip of him like I, beating I Gene's know, flash bro. kick with air wheel kick. That's so Going ascended, the wrong way. Man. Back into the corner. He can be playing like a walking casino if you want. Yeah. yeah, and it's not even terrible. I can't even like be really critical of it because it's like, no, it, it works. His moves work for <laughs> that. Like, <laughs> I can't even be like, well... I can't, I can't, I can't be a hater on it because it's, it's just completely not a terrible way to play him. Just because he's got really good suite of buttons, wheel kick is an amazing move. If you have really good reactions, that's a very just super strong tool. Dynamite tackle is great, and I think like the hardest thing about playing him is his hidden special move. That's like the the filter. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely like the one. Literally, like the one difficult thing about Ray. It's yep, definitely a do. tricky input because it's it's charge back. It's an extra long charge back, so you have to be. You take some time to getting used to it if you're doing it in chains, but you can do it in chain combos like normal. And then uh, it's a dash input. Both dynamite tackles use a dash input, so six six light punch or heavy punch. And you have to do it yeah, really fast usually, after the charge too. Yes, that's yeah. the thing. People usually uh, screw. Either they don't charge enough, or they do the the tackle really slowly, the the forward forward motion. Mm -hmm. And especially trying to do it in neutral when like a lot of stuff can happen, and someone's like jumping at you, or like throwing big tornadoes, or like mm -hmm. doing an also a crazy reversal. It can be very hard to do it in the heat of the match, but it's very very strong. And overall, it's one of the few things you're really going to need to work on execution wise as a Ray player. So it definitely, you're going to benefit from being able to practice it and do it. But um, overall Ray, I think is definitely one of the easiest and best characters to get into the game with and kind of show somebody what the game is about. I would, yeah. I would call them really the hyper Shoto. I think of them as one of the ultimate Shotos really. And I think they're a, they're a good quintessential Shoto, but also a funny like twist on the Shoto in a very simple way. And the way they twisted it is they asked, what if the Tatsu was the DP? And what uh. if the Tatsu, and, and then what if we replace the Tatsu with a shoulder charge that's safe on block and knocks down and goes full screen and stuff like that? So you have basically the same tools, but not in the same way. And the way wheel kick works is kind of in the same way as a DP, but it, it's just so much fun to use. But it also does kind of have the weaknesses of a Tatsu where it can kind of be low profiled and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was noticing recently, it. like, yeah, like playing against characters who are good at crouching a lot in their matchups, you're not going to be able to just abuse that in neutral, like playing against Lee players with their super long crouching heavy punch and stuff. They can kind of low profile your wheel kick and out you at the same time. Sometimes if they space stuff right like that. And so it's a very, very strong move in it, but it's not, really the end-all be-all but it's definitely one of the quintessential 
Cardinal yeah. moves. And that is also yeah. like Ray versus Lee is a really fun matchup. That's one of the matchups where uh, Thunder Dynamite Tackle is really important because Lee has such a hard to hit weak spot, but Thunder Tackle just hits it uh, for all its hits. So it will stun him instantly, pretty much. And it does a shitload of damage if you combo into it after the stun. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yes. like. Just like a based lot. on how Lee works as a character, it's totally warranted. That's just the kind of game this <laughs> is. You know, that matchup is literally can. one touch almost between both characters. It's very volatile. The only other thing about Ray that's like uh, that kind of takes some getting used to is his close standing heavy punch and close standing heavy kick have yeah. awful range. And so sometimes you'll you'll go in for a combo on Dizzy and you'll do like a ju- uh, jumping heavy punch and you'll do like one crouching light kick and then. If you go like straight into uh, close standing heavy punch, he might be in the range where the close standing heavy punch will activate, but then it just whiffs entirely, and you and you drop your combo. So you kind of have to take a little bit of time to like practice his his bread and butters. Like you want to do like a a couple extra crouching light kicks or crouching jabs just to push him out of the range where you're not going to get the the close standing heavy punch because the far standing heavy punch has really good range and it's bufferable, so you still have you know. You can still buffer off that, and also that gives you more charge time for the for the thunder dynamite tackle. Anyway, yeah, but having just, like those, those, those close normals are just really frustrating. Having it's these really like advice, cancelable, yeah. uh, f- cancelable far standing heavy buttons is just really really nice to have in this game, and that's something that really separates it from you know uh, any version of Street Fighter Two. Very few characters have like cancelable heavies from a distance. Mm-hmm. And so, and something as powerful as like. Uh, Far standing heavy punch into dynamite tackle, where it's like safe, can knock down on hit, but you're gonna feel fl- safe on a lot. But I think that is good to note that kind of proximity normal thing, because that is one of the also, I would say, the other kind of difficult thing about Ray, and that makes him slightly less brain dead, even though he is pretty brain dead, is that <laughs> you kind of really have to judge the distance on uh, when you use his heavy normals and stuff, because. It is funny, both of his close heavy, close standing heavy normals, uh, heavy punch and heavy kick, are pretty bad. But the range, the far ones, are both really, really good. And you're going to be using them a lot. So you're really going to need to learn the distance when that proximity activates. And off of certain situations, because it's like sometimes you'll cross up and and your standing heavy punch won't have the range to hit. Or you'll need to do like one or specifically one or two. Uh, chains into the standing heavy punch to get the range. So it can be difficult to get that right range all the time, but it's yeah. very simple and effective, but also you kind of have to really pay attention and to the simple stuff. Right. I would say he's not brain dead, but rather I think he's easy. Uh, because yeah. he's the, the show to play style, and many people are good at that. But I think it's easy to get overconfident and just throw fireballs, and in some matchup, you have to be very wary. Because depending on who you're fighting, they may have a perfect answer to your things. And, you know, he's a character that some characters just can kill him instantly because his weak spot, once exposed and to a combo, uh, basically makes him melt. Like the Lee matchup, for example, he needs to avoid getting dizzy. And sometimes that can be difficult, right? When you're just throwing fireballs and then you're, you die because of one mistake. Mm-hmm. Or right. even, or I don't think, I don't, I don't think anyone's tr- truly brain dead in this game. Definitely all the top characters are a little bit a lot stronger some than some of the weaker characters, but all of the top tier characters can really give each other a run for their money, and you can't really sleep on any particular character. Yeah, I feel like this game right. isn't too poorly balanced for like the time it came out in. No. But uh well, this since we've been we've been talking a lot about Lee, so uh yeah, Lee He's he's an interesting character in his own right because it's like yeah he is very straightforward and offense based but I feel like just the amount of range he has on stuff where he can be a threat is just a lot more than most characters you know because he's got the quick dagger punch that covers like it says there pretty much three quarters or maybe a little more of that of the screen in an instant and that just like if you're in neutral it makes it kind of daunting to throw a fireball at him so you'll see people jabbing against this character a lot in order to uh, stop him from rush punching at them, and then that creates his whole footsies game for him. Right. Uh, I think this is a character that is very satisfying to play, especially for a beginner. If they are, if a person is new to this game, I would point them to Lee because 
he just gets so much damage done like really easily with no effort right so i think at the lower levels he can be really effective in a way that many other characters just cannot because they have to do other things but he just you know you just throw your heavy punches you combo into into your rekas you anti air like at the basic the most basic level you cannot get more like more advanced than that and you can really go a long way with that with just those basics yeah the the basic bread and butter for him, you know just chain into standing or crouching heavy punch do a fireball with heavy punch forward forward heavy punch and that's easy combo that knocks down and if it doesn't dizzy you get to you get an oki okazemi chance and if they do get dizzied off that then you can just repeat the combo and it's going to do even more damage because of the extra 50 percent damage from from hitting a weak point so sometimes he just wins matches like instantly off one dizzy just uh, if they have a a weak point on their chest because of how yeah. much damage uh, that he can do to it and he kind of yeah. he like uh points towards a trend of like the the more you grind the game the higher level you get uh, everything becomes kind of more extreme. You know, the strength of zoning in characters like uh, Ray and Gene and the strength of offense. And like, you know, it, it becomes to a point where like you have to learn your mix-ups with quick dagger punch cross-ups. You have to learn how to use the palm blast effectively. And the input on that is is really something. You've got a back, forward, down, back, down, forward, both punches. So that's like a very classic SNK style motion. And that's... <laughs> That's still unique among them, I think. Like nothing's quite like yeah. that. I guess it's a little simpler than a pretzel motion, but it it'll take some practice. It definitely takes some some time to get used to, but yeah, at at high level, it's definitely worth using just because he gives you a little extra oomph on on dizzy combos, and it's also like a ton of free chip damage if you get in close and can throw it out. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot like Ray, where um, one of the big like things. To, to work on with him is like executing that move and getting efficient at it. Similar to I, that. I think he's a character that rewards practicing the motion because once you can do it off of lights, basically any low is extremely like life changing, more or less. Oh, you can, yeah. You can yeah, dizzy so many people quickly, right? It is is ridiculously fast. Yeah, it's like four frames or something, which. Uh, oh, I mean, wow. again, the motion is like what holds it back from using it in, say, in neutral. You've kind of got to be more uh, clever with that. But you can use it to like stop fireballs as well, which is a nice benefit. Yeah, I would say Lee and Ray are two characters that are very easy and effective. And some of, I would say, the best kind of beginner characters and gateway characters to really get people into this game. Um Lee, a very simple, but a kind of like basic, but effective toolkit. It kind of shows you just like, even if you have kind of basic options where you just have mainly the dagger punch and the the DP you're going to be doing a lot, can still challenge a lot of these crazier characters like Ray, who's going to be shooting these crazy, all these fireball characters and all these uh, and characters like Zazzy doing all these crazy uh, pressure yeah. and stuff like that. You're going to be able to challenge them just with this incredibly wow. fast dash punch I think and um, something this incredibly else incredibly good DP. Yeah, something else important to note. Uh, Lee has a pretty favorable matchup against Karnov. I feel like that's pretty much a universal sentiment. It's like he beats Karnov pretty handily. Yes. I think and that's, he beats Karnov, yeah. That's also, that also may be important to you as a new player starting out, because Karnov is a very daunting character to fight. He's got really strong mix-ups. He's got a... Solid neutral plan too, because he's got uh, his own, you know, rushdown special in hundred kicks that's safe on block. So you know, having that edge and like when you can close in on him is really important. Right. One thing I want to say about Lee is mm -hmm. I think many people downplay him, like saying like he's worse than Gene. He's like a uh, mid height tier. Lee is insane. He's definitely <laughs> top tier. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think there's any doubt on that in yeah. my in my view at least. Yeah. I think the top three in general is like no one is sure who's the best in the game, but the top three of like Ray, Lee, Zazzy is pretty universally agreed on as well. I, I usually hear it as the four gods, honestly, and I hear no, I would, Lee, I Lee, 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 honestly. I, yeah, I, I, I usually Zazie's hear one, four gods. I, I hear it as the four gods as Lee, Ray, Karnov, Zazzy. Yeah, and yeah. that's also like the poster that uh, Hibachi recently put out that has the four yeah. gods on it. I feel like a yeah. couple of years ago I was hearing like, you know, Karnov is like slightly below them and he's kind of in his own tier with Gene, but I guess that kind of opinion has shifted recently. I don't know. I don't agree with that. I think 
raise more than Ghana. Uh, but I, I that's guess my it speaks opinion. to like uh, the depth of the game that people still have not necessarily figured out the tier list because the characters are all competing very well with each other. Yeah. At well, least one character that, like... who one character who <laughs> speaking of one character I've never seen at the top of the tier list, Ryoko. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we go immediately into like one of the, the bottom tiers of the know. game. She's got heart. She looks cool. I would definitely like uh, her design and her stuff. But yeah, I feel like in terms of we've discussed a lot what is effective in this game, and I feel like Ryoko definitely does not really benefit from a lot of the mechanics and the way this game is kind of structured. Yeah, the way like throw protection works in this game, if you're the, like, the kind of character she is, it just does not work. Yeah. Just imagine being, how she was in, in Street Fighter 2, how good yeah. she would be. She'd be fucked up in that game! <laughs> being, being, like, oh, being a dedicated, yeah. like, uh, a close-range grappler who doesn't have any, like, strong, long-range normals like the other grappler will cover later, definitely hurts her a lot in the long run and she, she it's weird because like she's small and she's got the fastest walk speed which is like a very very intentional design choice but i think they kind of underestimated how effective people would be at keeping her out right and like i think her most interesting move because everything else here is pretty much a good summary to be honest but i think the hidden move is legitimately a really interesting move that's just kind of something you're not going to get to see used a lot because of how much trouble she has actually landing the damn thing. But it's really interesting because it's this throw that, yeah, like you said, lets you set up three mix-ups. And you can be really, really ambiguous with what you do after it. It's really nasty, technically. It's just... yep. I actually used it a lot. I think, it's, I think it's super useful to have because the follow-up that you can do in the air has more, does more damage than the, the ground throw. And the the range that you have for the toss is much greater than the range for the for the fire wheel. So in that case, uh, you will have more opportunities to land the, the yeah. toss. Yeah, she's interesting. She's got, a one, she's got one very close oh, range command grab. Yeah, she's got one very close range command grab that does like 40% on its own, but it kind of resets to neutral. So it's not, it's not ideal if you like get your first hit because you want to keep up that momentum. And so that's kind of the main use of her hit and move Kataguruma, which is like it'll you know set up mix ups or give you more guaranteed damage than her uh, far distance command grab. And yeah, the input for that is an upwards half circle. It doesn't matter oh, which that's direction. Yeah. That's that's one interesting quirk of the grapplers. They've got half circle inputs, and you can do it either direction. So like it works for you know uh, comfort on either side, or like you know option selecting it, or just kind of buffering it during your chains. It doesn't really matter which way. It's you a do very, it. it's a very like it's modern, anything a very modern design. design. Do it. That's mm -hmm. so interesting. I like that. I would also say I think another really, I'm pretty sure Ryoko doesn't have a special move that really goes a long range and gets her through a lot of stuff. I see she has yeah. that role, but I don't think that goes like far. The role is attack, so. the role is useful so in like uh in closer quarters because it'll you know it'll if she hits it right, it can combo into command grab or you know it can go on their things. And it goes through some fireballs but not all of them because the chip. her low I mean, problem. Yeah. I use it for that. Yeah the chip oh, damage okay. on it's good too. <laughs> if you use a heavy version she she does two rolls and that does what? four hits of chip, which is a pretty yeah. good amount. Chip damage All in this right. game is interesting, because it's not based on like the damage of the attack. Everything does a flat, like, four damage or something of chip. So it's a number of hits uh, that really matters. Uh, Alright, well, that's, that's Ryoko, I guess. I can't really add anything. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she struggles. Really good, I, I really would good say... Um, she's yeah, not... Ahead. I would say she, she seems fun. Is that she's, I would say she's not completely useless. But in terms of like a tournament setting, you're not. It's you're gonna have a rough time, and you're gonna have to put in a lot, a lot of work, and you're gonna have to win a ton more guesses than a lot of other characters were, and you're gonna have to do like I've seen some fun and cool stuff, like um, like a Ryoko. Like you can kind of vortex people with the stuff, but you're gonna have to like mix them up like and guess right like five or six times against characters who have unbelievably good dragon punches that will likely challenge you at every opportunity that they can. Because yeah, and, this is yeah. Oh go on, sorry. This is a game where we're like, yeah, like we, we talked about how Ray and Lee get to convert like random hits into into so much damage. Maybe re maybe Ray a little 
a little less than the, the damage Lee gets, but like a random attack of Ryoko's, like you have to get that uh, uh, the hidden move to actually like get any sort of damage because if you get the uh, the the sliding throw, that's just that's like what seven eight percent damage. I mean, you get a you get a mix up situation afterwards, but yeah, like you just have to be like so on point with having. Uh, with with knowing like the all the all the things you can do off that mix up and then uh, trying to like actually hit the opponent with those mix ups and uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna know all that stuff like jumping into it so she's not a very beginner friendly character. Yeah, and the other thing too, to use, but the thing is that you you really need to make your situations count because if you don't, you just get pushed back and it's really hard to to enter again. Yeah, that's the thing. And yeah. again, like since all of her like damage comes from like the throws, uh, she's also not hitting weak points very often and getting stuns. Yeah, which, that's uh, a really good point. Is uh, something that isn't mentioned on the slide, but it's something I've noticed. Uh, like real good... stun combos are. Uh... That's actually yeah. very true as well, because it's like yeah, against some characters who have like lower weak spots, she can do like crouching jab or crouching light kick into her. She actually has a command normal, which is like a hand sweep, you know, down forward heavy punch. And that's actually pretty useful for hitting weak spots. But the other, the other downside is that uh, her hidden move will like when they're being launched like that, you actually can't hit their weak spot, which is a really weird decision. But that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, so that's, it's you, kind of a good preventing you from it. giving you free hits. Yeah, uh, I guess okay. that's uh, it's interesting. Well, like I, I before, feel like it wouldn't. I feel like it wouldn't be unbalanced for her to have that. But I, I can see why they balanced it. They designed it like that starting out. Yeah, you can see why, but like I said before, the mechanics of the game work against her. She just does not work well in the system. Yep. And currently, the way they go. All right. The game. Let's see the next character. We've got Mizoguchi. So, we've talked uh, a bit about like uh, Mizoguchi's <laughs> difficulty in combos, and I feel like this, this guy's got a lot to offer uh, in, the, in the game. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like, I guess we can say high tier at this point. You know, he falls just outside of that top four range. But he I is think super he might be better than Jean. Uh, what? I think he might be better than Jean, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, I but I that. would say I would say that it was like my impression is that Mizuguchi and Jean are like right below the top four. They're like the gatekeepers to the top tiers, and kind of really, mm. from my impression at least. I think this is a character that had a very interesting evolution in his playstyle and his representation because nobody used to play this character honestly on online you would never see him and now you you would see many people on 5k who use Mizuguchi, right and to a very good level so this is like a character that basically came out of nowhere and now everybody's like Mizuguchi monsters and tearing people up with him yeah, uh, in, in really our least, cool. sorry, I just want to say, in our least slide, we kind of talked about Lee being like the Fei Long, but I feel like in a way, Mizoguchi almost works a bit more of a, like, in Fei Long's niche, as far as like being a character who really uh, depends on being in your face. He has a fireball, but it's like not really useful at all outside of the uh, grappler matchups. So his kind of game plan is to poke at you, uh, yeah, like get into a closer range where you can kind of use the uh, Tatsu, a scissor kick, to uh, low crush and it's safe on block and you can go into DP from that. So he kind of relies a lot on those frame traps and then once he can get in and start his mix-ups, uh, it can be really hard to escape. What's really funny and one of the things that I think at some point, yeah, you meant at the top of the slide, you call him the Ken of this game, which I, d I do agree with in some way, but it's really funny is that he has a Shoto move list but he just works very, very differently. To a people that he's not a Shoto, basically. Yeah. He yeah. Like a Shoto, he has, he he's not, he has the stuff, but he's very much his own unique character and he's his own thing. It's another reason, it's a bit of a tangent, but it's why it's kind of, it annoys me that they tried to sue this game. Like, oh, it's a Street Fighter 2 clone. And even when I posted a picture and people were like, it was a picture then it had of the character select screen one like of Mizuguchi and Rei. And someone was like, that looks exactly like Street Fighter. And I'm like, those characters play nothing like Ryu and Ken. Like if you actually know how to play a fighting game. Yeah. But, um, the the thing is like they sued the original fighter's history. And I mean that game also still had its differences. It had the weak spot system. But uh I guess I can see that like when you don't have the uh the flavor separating these characters from like Ryu and Ken a lot of the time is like their yeah. combo game and that kind of that kind of came into play only in Fighters History Dynamite. 
but yeah, at this point, like he's he's a pretty distinct character, you know. But also, he's the one who he looks like Ryu, but he does play like the Ken of the game. Ryu mm -hmm. Ray is really the Ryu of the game in terms of the fireball pressure and kind of the the standard uh, Shoto pressure and stuff like that. Whereas Mizuguchi is really the the funky Shoto, to where he has kind of the tools of one, but you got to do it in an interesting way. And so the way the Tatsu works is really the most interesting and, and different part about Mizuguchi is that every hit of the Tatsu, you have to manually input. And so you can sometimes do uh, less hits than intended and not fully end it. And so this will allow... The most important thing is this allows for more pressure, varied pressure uh, sequences, and this allows for very specific... Uh, space-specific combos where you can do a specific amount of hits get a specific amount of Tatsu reps and then combo back into another jab in which will lead to another Tatsu or you can end it in some way, usually mm -hmm. with the heavy DP. It, and it's like difficult because the, uh, the Tatsu is plus four on hit and uh, lights yeah. in this game have two frame startup. So that's three, you know, that's a two frame window you've got in order so, to yeah, actually very, complete that link. It's difficult. Yeah. And like we said before, there is the... Oh, I'm hearing myself now. Oops. Um, uh, yeah. There's but yeah, that's that's one, what makes Mizuguchi. The P, there's Sorry. the one P and two P uh, side difference, and so that's why that is going to be huge for a character like Mizuguchi. If you're really trying to go for a lot of those uh, super cool reps and stuff like that, and so you don't need to necessarily be a master of those, but if you want to be really effective with Mizuguchi, and I think that's fine. It's it's funny. Golden Shade said that. Um, this character really developed over time. And this really strikes me as kind of a, a fight cade developed top tier. Like one that like, if you were putting quarters in the arcades, it was not financially beneficial for you to pick a character like Mizuguchi. Because oh, yeah, it cause... would be really hard and you would not win very often. Whereas like if you picked Ray or Lee or something like that, you would often make a lot of, of games off of your quarter. Whereas like once it's on fight gate and you can play online and it's not pay per game, a character like this really evolves. And especially with something like training mode, whereas a lot of the other characters like Ray and Lee, you're not going to need to training mode all the time and don't benefit as much unless you're like just kind of practicing the hidden move and stuff. But this is a character. This is the training. If you're a training mode Lord, you should, you should play some music Gucci. I would I recommend him. Yep. Yeah, uh, I love this character and how, like, he really emphasizes, like, I feel like his special, his hidden special moves, even if they're not particularly amazing, they really do emphasize the dizzy system in this game. And I just, agree. like, yeah. how they work. Like, just the, the big wind-up fireball, which, again, won't work if they stun Nash, but, like, I think that just shows me that they were designing around it. And they wanted their poster character to have, like, not one, but two hidden moves that both benefit greatly from getting a stun. Man, Mizuguchi's like, like position as the uh, face of the series is kind of interesting because mm -hmm. he doesn't get as much promo in like uh, Fighters History or Fighters History Dynamite. But then they made like, I guess because he was so popular, because he's like kind of a goofy character, right? He's very, you know, he's he's like a parody almost, uh, and that kind of that kind of he got his own uh, Super Nintendo game and he got a cameo in a. KOF on uh, Maximum Enbu. Impact. Yeah. Suiko Enbu, too. Yeah, that's... Oh, I forgot. Some, he was, uh, he's, he's crazy at Maximum Impact. Dude, he's so sick. In it's some... Uh, Suiko Enbu is some deep Daily East lore. I think that game, you know... Yeah. If at one point we get a Saturn rollback, that's definitely going to be one of the highlights. <laughs> or STD we'll rollback. But, oh man, I really want to also mention that... <laughs> It's kind of unrelated. But in Maximum Impact, Mizuguchi has a move that he doesn't have in this game where he takes off his sandal, he throws it into the air, and then it comes down on your opponent like a projectile. And you can use it like as Oki and like as pressure, where you just throw your sandal in the air and it comes down as like an anime style orb pressure. Hidden shoe awesome. missile. I wish yeah. it was in. Yeah, it is like a hidden shoe missile. It's it would be great in this game. It would be yeah, so fun. It also has like a Star Wars uh, baseball bat or something. What? Yeah, in that Suiko Enbu, yeah. Take... Oh what? Oh yeah, because everyone has like a weapon in that game. That game was crazy. Mizuguchi's cool. I love Mizuguchi. All right, up next, uh, clown. Clown is a weird oh, character. God. I think like the they reason he cars. gets 
The reason he gets this uh, kind of difficulty rating is, I think, because uh, all his moves, except for pick a card, require a down back charge. So keeping that in mind when you're doing basically anything is going to uh, trip you up for a bit. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I think his combos are not that hard, but you have to know what to do and how to do them, because they are very specific in how you have to combo them. It's not like a, like playing Blanca and you can just pick up Clown and that's it. You have to understand how to combo with this character. Yeah, and definitely an interesting character. Not a, definitely not a bad character, but you kind of got to know what you're doing, and you got to really try for some specific and stuff. And yeah, I would really say the difficult thing about this, and the, a lot of the charge characters in this game, is just being able to maintain charge at all times and use it at the right times, which can be difficult in a game that's so fast-paced and where a lot of the very effective and strong characters are not hampered by charge inputs, where a character like Ray, Lee, Zazie can threaten their DP without needing to have charge at any point. Yeah. Um, and in such a quick game, it's, it's, but Clown is definitely very interesting and, and effective, but you kind of got to put a little more work into it. One, I would say, I'm also kind of noticing there's a surprising amount of kind of Guile-esque, a clone and well, I guess he just kind of has a sonic boom input, so I can't really say that. But he's kind of a weird Blanca. He has his solo with, with, yeah, yeah, I he think it's just like character. he has a, uh, he has a with, Blanca move, right? I, I think you see the card used the most just because a it doesn't require a down back charge, so you can kind of you can stand up and use oh, standing yeah. normals without losing it. And then because it's such a good fireball, it uh, it travels slowly. It has pretty low recovery. It gives a lot of characters trouble if they don't have a good answer to fireballs like uh, Ray or Zazzy. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, that might be a uh, that might be a ten zero <laughs> matchup, man. That's we a gotta, good match, right? We've got to we've okay, got to talk I'm about that. the voice of disagreement on that, but we talk about that later when we get to Mars. What's wild about yeah. that is that like it's you know it will get there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. But Clown has some good points. He has the best throw in the game because you can mash it, and even if you don't mash it, you get a lot of um, a lot of uh, damage and also a setup where you can uh, throw a pick a card and then fly to the other side of the screen and basically cross them up. Um, he also has a 50-50 if you jump at the opponent. It's a 50-50 between overhead clown ball and a low, right? <laughs> so he's one of the few characters oh, yeah. with an actual like legit 50-50. I think yeah. what kind of holds Clown back a little bit, though, is that he he doesn't have like the same kind of burst damage that you would get from you know Lee Mizuguchi or whatever. Like he doesn't really get to convert like any of his uh, any of his openings into like super big damage. Even and also, the other zoners, you know, like uh, Sam Chai, Gene, Gene especially. We're going to talk about him later. Yeah, yeah, and. Um... and and like yeah, his, his weak point being on his head, like if he's crouching, yeah. like it can just get obliterated real fast. So you have to be you have to be really careful, like uh, switching between standing and crouching with him because you can just get blown up super fast. And then they're going to get to do way more damage to you than he can dish out. So, yeah, having that. All right. And also is he, like... has a, he has a head wheat ball and he has terrible anti airs for the most part. Like his best anti air is his standing jab, which is very good. It's. Basically, you're just using it to keep the opponent out. Um, you're not using it for anything else. And if if you miss, you're done. That's it. Yeah, there's that clip, and it's one of my favorite Karnov's Revenge clips of all time, uh, where where Gene hits Clown and and just does the hands glitch on him. It hits him in the head. He just dives instantly. It's like the fucking best thing because like Clown is he's got a lead for most of this round, and then he gets hit by one jump in, and it, that's just it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. It's sad it sometimes. Like uh, Truly, yeah. God's best clown. And then we get to again another bottom tier character. I think. Oh boy. I I uh... think like she's worse than Ryoko on the account of like having low damage. But I think uh, Golden Shades might have something to say about that, right? Do I? I feel well... like you see a lot in this character compared to like a lot of people. Well, the thing is that you can actually play failing and get some sort of consistency, unlike Ryoko, where it's mostly like you're just having luck on your on your side. But failing can be played like more solidly. She has a nice DP that it has very few uh, few frames of recovery. Um, she can play kind of lame, but the thing is that you're going to be basically you're playing to be a mosquito and basically pamper your opponents with 
with chip damage, with blocked uppercuts, and you have to pray that they don't find an opening and basically kill you off that. Yeah, that's it's kind of a problem because again, her weak spot is not very good, and that seems to be kind of a trend with these zoning characters that they have a a, a pretty easy to hit mid weak spot, which. For someone like Ray or even Samshai to an extent, it it's kind of warranted because their keep out is really strong and their uh, their combo damage is not bad either. But I think in Phelan's case, it really hurts. Yeah, and right. her her air fireball is one of the strangest ones I've ever seen. I yeah, it's I don't even know if it's like good or bad. It's just odd. It, I think it's good for her, right? If if a better character had her air fireball, I think they wouldn't. Pay much attention. If Raid had her air fireball, I think he wouldn't really care a lot. But I think in the context of her toolkit, I think she can use it uh, a lot, especially to to gamble at the end of the round when you can use the air fireball as an instant overhead and it yep. will kill. Well, I think it's worth it sometimes to take the gamble and just go for it because, I mean, what else are you gonna do, right? Yeah, it's like a it's like a goofy like kind of shitty version of Salvia's Fireball and Fist of the North Star, where it's like an overhead and it's really fast, but it, it is a big gamble, like you said. It's good for her, though, I would agree. He's, he's not even good on hit, because on hit you get punished. <laughs> well, you know... I actually wonder, kill. like, you know, if you were to make a change with making her fireball, her air fireball knock down, maybe even her grounded fireball, too, if that would, like, yeah, why significantly not? help her as a character. Or at least sure. it'd be something, you know? I, I feel know, like I it would help, but I would say overall, someone uh, th someone said before, like, they, she plays like a mosquito, where you kind of just got to zone and play a lot of keep away and stuff like that. And it's like, there are a lot of effective characters like that in this game. Like, we'll probably get and talk about that with Sam Chai and stuff like that and how good his fireball is. But some characters, it's it's hard to to count on that and play that when some of the characters in this game are so explosive. So Phelan will still be like decent, but like uh, a character like Ray or will kind of have the the zoning capabilities of her, but still be able to be explosive and do damage up close and and really scare people up close. Yeah, and a character sadly. like like Zazzy, who doesn't even have a fireball, has all the tools to very effectively. Uh, evade all stuff like that and still right. just get in your face. And I think like, sadly Ray makes her a bit redundant, I think, because yeah. he also can play defensively and he does a much better job if he wants to, to be lame and zone. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Ray, yeah, that's uh, the unfortunate one of the unfortunate things in terms of this game in a competitive sense is I feel like Ray really outshines a lot of the zoners and stuff like that and does yeah, kind of what. Play, yeah. They do what the fire other fireball characters do, pretty much just as good, while having also really good up close uh, kind of uh, burst damage capabilities and pressure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we were I talking mean, about uh, grapplers earlier on, so we're back with yeah! uh, Marstorius. Yeah. <laughs> so Moon Salt. This is Marstorius is a funny character. Yeah, he definitely has some of the better lines in this game. He's got double German. Uh, which is just Sherman. a fucking hilarious command grab that's got like, it's got nearly a uh, SPD range. It's got a half circle input. So if he's like anywhere beyond like, you know, half screen away. Yeah. Then, then you're always worried about that. He can combo into it naturally. And he's got a ton of mix ups off it. When you grab someone with double German, you get to charge up your uh, dash lariat, which brings you close. And then you get to set up any sort of like cross up. You can, uh, you know, reversal right in their face with the uh, knee drop in order to out-prioritize them. There's just, he has a lot of options once he gets in where you can just lose a round like that off a, a couple of right reads. Yeah, in a way, I think uh, he's even more extreme than Ryoko because his jump sucks. Like, there's no way to other way to say it. It sucks, right? It's way too low to the ground. You get hit all the time with fireballs. But at the same time, you fed the needle once, and you can kill a, a, a character in one or, or two mix-ups with this guy. Yeah, his yeah. jump is really terrible for approaching, but when he is right next to you and he's knocked you down, it's the most fucking awful thing in the world to think about because everything crosses up. It's all really ambiguous looking. It's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's nasty. Like, try to, you know, 
Try to imagine a character that has a uh, KOF hop as their only jump, because there are no hops in this game. There's only one yeah, jump. That's a good analogy, yeah. That's uh, basically it. And yeah, he's got a few different command normals. He's got his standard body splash, which actually works pretty well as an air-to-air, -air, just because it's got a bit of range in front of him that you wouldn't expect. He's got his a... His uh, sweep. Oh yeah, my god. Yeah, his sweep is uh, that, unreal. That is one of the most fucked up three-frame normals I've ever seen. It is... Two frames, actually. Oh, good, even better. Two frames. Yeah, two star They like the attacks in the game. Just and it's... Grab uh, with a it is uh, totally point. disjointed too. Uh, it's so you pretty much. It's very hard to hit his weak spot. Uh, you can whiff punish it though. That's the thing that makes that like is fundamental to his footsies. Is like uh, sort of moving around and trying to uh, get them to either you know respect your sweep or potentially like go for a whiff punish. And if that's the case, you know then they're whiffing their normal, and you you know you're working your way in towards him. That's another thing about the engine I don't think we really talked about is that if you if you cancel a normal move, if you have a command throw and you cancel a normal move into that command throw, it counts as like a chain normal on whatever button you press. So if you do uh, Marstorius's crouching heavy kick and then do a double German like half circle back with light punch, the, the crouching heavy kick will actually cancel into like a standing light punch. So it actually like cuts off the recovery a little bit. And so it lets, uh, it lets grapplers do like weird pressure strings on block. Like yeah, the offense up. it's it's the really useful. Character in a fighting game with reverse beat. Oh wow! And it, yeah. it's funny. To put it like that. that's a good so analogy. Ways, yeah, ahead of its time in so many ways. So many uh, ways. Yeah, obviously Ryoko can do that too. On yeah. when when they block. Interesting. I have to and mess around. We with talked that. about the clown Marstorius matchup. This is a great one. So uh, <laughs> Golden Shades mentioned earlier. You know, clown standing jab, not a great anti air in. in Pretty much every matchup, except this one, because my story is. Good, but you know, it's even better when the other guy can do very few things to stop it. Right? No, because yeah. the way it works is that his jump is really low, right? And it, like, the apex of his jump does not clear Clown's jab. And Clown's jab is like it's disjointed and it's far-reaching and it's very active. And so he has to try and get over these fireballs that are moving really slow with this jump, and then he does, and then Clown just presses jab. Yeah, and it beats and every even, one of his jumping normals, and it applies yep. to yeah. his uh, so the his best specials you can too. hope for is empty he's, jumps, and even then, it's not completely safe that you're going to make it. Yeah, he's and got it's still these, kind uh, of a, he's got these charge specials as well that help him get over fireballs, but even those can still be anti-aired or even uh, trip guarded. Or I'm not gonna get into like that, uh, you know, term, but like, yeah, you can you know sweep him, sweep anti-air him pretty effectively, mm -hmm. especially do his who do. Due to his weak spot. Yeah. So uh, he definitely has a lot of weaknesses, but a lot of effectiveness. And I think he fills that grappler niche very well he's, in this game. He's always he such, really a, is... such a wild card on the tier list because his his placement is like entirely matchup dependent. Because it basically depends on, am I fighting a character that has a fireball? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, pretty much determines like how he's gonna do. He's, he's got really a good favorable like matchup. Me. Yeah, I think he's even good. like yeah. I think Zazzy. I don't know if that's an even matchup, but it's like maybe a four-six, which is like well, a pretty good matchup let, to have against Zazzy. Let, let me tell you this: yeah. Zazzy uh, has Hellfire, and that's a very hard to punish move. Masters yeah. can punish yeah. it with no problem with his sweep and get close uh, and oh, just run him yeah. off. True. Yeah, yeah, no, like it's weird, right? This is a good character to play if you if you don't wanna if you wanna fight Lee. If you're sick of Lee, this is a great character to, to learn. Because <laughs> he's got it's a lot of free match by any means, but no, it's, but yeah, no, it, you know how to play the character, yeah. you can win, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's very fun. Very interesting. He is, he is I a think fun like, character to, yeah. to play, but he's such a uh uh such a volatile character to play in tournament because you have to yeah. If you're committing to him in tournament, like you have to hope they don't have a, a pocket character that, like Clown or Ray or somebody. Oh god, yeah, yeah Clown. <laughs> Otherwise, you know that makes him a pretty good pocket of his own. Because if you're playing, again, if you're playing a character who kind of struggles with Lee or Zazzy, which is like most of the cast that isn't uh, Ray, you know, or those characters themselves, then yeah, he's a good character to pick up for them. All right, for sure. Move on to Sam Chai now. Uh, uh, yes. Sam Chai is an interesting <sighs> character. He's yeah, he's iconic uh, for other reasons. He's kind of an underdog, you know. He's got 
He's got the interesting weakness where he can't chain his lights except for crouching light kick. So you'll you'll rely on that button so much it's unreal. But uh the low short master. He's got he's got some pretty good special moves to back it up, at least. You know, he's got a good sweep. He's got a Sagat level fireball. He definitely feels like old Sagat in some ways. Yeah. Definitely I used not to think that he was worse than Race, but actually it's it's the same by the frames. They have the same oh, really? frame. It's literally yeah. the same? That's funny. So they have, he has Race Fireball with some differences in startup and recovery. He just but puts his arm like a lot might, more forward. I, yeah, I feel like it might so, yeah. recover a little bit quickly. But yeah, that's another thing. So Sam Chase, he has some good stuff, some effective stuff, but ultimately kind of hampered and just doesn't have the consistency that someone like Ray would have. And especially with stuff like the special moves, like um, their one special move is weird, right? They have one that knocks down, but it's the one where they put their their elbows and their knees together and they kind of dash forward. Yeah, that one like doesn't that. knock down, but it is. It, it does. Oh, that lose, one doesn't. Yeah. yeah, it does hit weak spots pretty well, like especially against Ray himself. But uh, he's got the tiger knee, which is interesting because it's it's a quarter circle forward. It's not the actual tiger knee motion, so that makes it a lot easier to use in the heat of the moment. And uh, it's minus one at worst on the light kick version, so you can space that to be safe or plus pretty easily. Uh, you know, and that, that kind of makes the cornerstone of his game. You can use that to move in, especially off like a canceled sweep or stuff. You can uh, whiff it into a throw. You can use it to cross people up after a knockdown. So, you know, he's got a very straightforward kit, and it kind of teaches you how to use all the uh, different mechanics of the game. He does have a yeah, pretty unfortunate also, weak spot. Yeah. The, the most unfortunate part of the, the game mechanics, because honestly, playing this guy is like, you pick him, you throw some good fireballs, and then you get jumped on once, and you die. <laughs> and you're like, how did I die? What happened? Yep. Yeah. He does have some really, really interesting cross-ups and corpse hop setups with uh, the Tiger Knee. It's not mentioned here, but it's really good for like switching sides. and like, So if you want to like get out of the corner, you can do that. If you want to yeah. keep the corner, you can do that. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with it. It's really neat. Uh, Sancho there, also has... Is, he has one really weird motion. Uh, he has oh, a sort yeah. of DP, but it's... Six, the motion one, is... Three. Yeah. Forward, down, back, down, forward. I don't know. They were, like, out of... Uh, oh. Out of proper uh, uh, dragon punch inputs at the factory, I don't know. Just, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Data East was just doing what the hell they wanted. I it's genuinely a, believe that every fighting game they make, they just were like, you know what? They got like three guys in a boardroom, and they all were just like, "This would be awesome. Let's do it." And that's why Suiko Wembu let you jump off fireballs. Like, there's just no other reason I can think uh, of that they would put that uh, in the game. This is yeah. the company that made Trio the Punch, so right. <laughs> And fucking Avengers and Galactic Storm. There's another game <laughs> that's just really normal, made by Days. Data East yeah, made some like confusing games of confidence, and I really appreciate that. You no, know, for man, what they got. What they wanted. Yeah, I love it. It's so good. Yep. All right. Next up, Matlock. Matlock. Oh, I love this guy. He's oh. interesting. He's got some really strong zoning too, because again, he's got the, as you'd expect from proper Guile clone, he's got like the very low recovery on Sonic Boom that allows him to, you know combo off it allows him to set up pressure that is really scary to deal with if he can get you cornered. My dude throws his mix tape. Yeah, she's, it is a CD. I never noticed it until like, I just thought it was like an energy thing, but no, it's actually a CD. He yeah, it's a really, really nice touch. Because like, his normals are weird. I don't know. Some yeah, of them are really so good. Weird. Some of them are really that's... good, and then other ones are just like, what the hell? He yeah. has the lowest normal in the game, the back fist. Yeah, that thing is like that thing does that. That's a new fighting game button. <laughs> that that's like a 2020 normal. Yeah, that's got like <laughs> some yeah. some low crush to it's it. It's like, like a crush yeah. counter from Street Fighter Five. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's why this game. It's so crazy how old this game is, but how modern it feels at the oh, same true. time. Oh, true. Yeah, it's you so... can really feel it when you press stand fierce. In, in a it's way, so eternal. Oh, his his eternal like. <laughs> In a way, his design feels a little like disconnected from the game, but I think it all comes back together because he's got all sorts of you know cross-up setups. Overhead kick is an interesting move because it's like uh, generally like you're gonna react to it, but sometimes he can sneak it in when you're like yeah, looking out for the fireball. Overhead. I mean, he does say overhead kick. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> he, 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 he does not lie about it. <laughs> I didn't get hit by them. <laughs> he doesn't lie about it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's not trying to 
I'm not trying to trick you or anything like that. <laughs> no, it's not like Gundam where the guy goes overhead and it's a mid. No, this is just oh, yeah. he's <laughs> overhead. It's uh, uh yeah. not it, at least. Yeah, and I mean the benefit is you know it's plus on block. So I mean if you're put in that situation, you're you're still blocking him, you know, and that's good for him. But uh, yeah, yeah really I, funny ass DP. It's really it's fast. Like, but yeah. yeah, but it was like I was trying to use a little bit of Matlock yesterday, and it was like I tried to do the DP once, and it was like one hit of it hit, and then didn't. Oh yeah, don't do the heavy one. Don't yeah, do the heavy, heavy one. one. Don't do the heavy. You you can't oh, okay. use it in combos really. You can like I think you can do one light into it, and that's it. You can't use it. I think is what you're okay. getting at. So. Like pretty so much. Just just the the light light <laughs> but is the light kick version it. decent? Oh yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. like it's functional, it's right? Okay, yeah. That was the end of. The like the worst special move in the game is the the heavy version of the of that kick because oh, yeah. if if you oh, hit it okay. in the air it's unsafe. If you hit That's it funny. from any distance other than like point blank, it's unsafe because the air hit will miss and you will be open to to punish. No oh, way. Wow. Uh, <laughs> if and if you want to use it for to hit weak spots, you can just use the loop version, which is the same, but you can continue it. So why would you do the heavy version? Why? For what reason? Yeah, you know, even, even like the loop, the looping hurricane is not very good either because uh, <laughs> it doesn't really. I'm not. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything. It's, it's, it's like it's got the same invincibility on startup, right? Or does it not even have invincibility? Oh, it does. It has it. It's just, it goes the away. Version, but you can continue it. That's the only difference. Yeah, and it doesn't knock down. You ever down wanted because... to see Duck King Super without the part where you know it's gonna hit? You can do that move if you want. It's it's it effectively kind of got a Duck King. Hairstyle. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's effectively dude. like a uh, a taunt. I think I think that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> that's what we'll, we'll go with. Yeah, yeah um, I will use it. Uh, I don't care if it's a taunt. I will use it. Yeah, that's I will use it. But that's I what we can say. say. A very, he, you know, Matlock. Matlock can still be an effective character. Uh, yes. He's a not without mixed, his upside. a mixed bag. A he super has, mixed bag character. He actually does he have a. An, an infinite with the fireball in the corner. If you're if you're really on point and the slowdown isn't dropping all your inputs. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah. But actually, even saying... if you cannot hit the, the infinite, he's very effective in the corner. He he can keep you there and you cannot escape, right? So if he has you in the corner, he's actually a very good character. But the problem is getting the other person into the corner. What's the infinite? It's, it's just, just... <laughs> spinning wave all. Spinning wave, spinning wave, spinning wave, and <laughs> you can, uh, yeah, that's funny. It's you like can just, just do plus each, uh, enough. Each fireball is like charge back and then go forward back and then press the button so you begin charging immediately. So you just oh, keep yeah. doing that over and over. But every time you land a hit, like there's that that slowdown when they get hit by the yeah, fireball, yeah. and that tends to to drop input. So that makes it yeah. that makes it kind of tricky because it's a charge move and you only have like so many chances to like get the move out. So, yeah, that's yeah, another thing. Time, is I feel like. People like opt for just you know throw a spinning wave to start start the combo and then just use you know that's extra damage at least but uh or sometimes you yeah, can combo your spinning wave your combo close heavy that. yeah that's the problem when you do a fireball at the, at the beginning first you're not doing that much extra damage and also you're scaling your combo because special moves scale in this game if you do more than once right yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true. So it's not a very good idea. In my, I don't do it. When I play Matlock, I just go for the two kicks into the overhead kick and then the sweep, and then that's it. Yeah, and that's still like solid damage. damage. Yeah. yeah, since you can, you know, since you combo off overhead kick, which is uh, an overhead that you can combo off of, like in a game from 1994. That's pretty neat. Yeah, ahead of its time again. Ahead yeah. of its time. So yeah, Matlock effective has some cool stuff, but definitely. A bit weird and inconsistent in some areas, and I oh, think yeah. again, I want to say it's uh, really quickly suffers yeah. from the charge oh, character yeah. problem. Of this game is just too fast and requires you to be able to do your at the top level requires you to be able to do your special yeah. moves at all times oh, very he's, quickly. He's not saying that way. Yeah, we can move on to uh, the big man, the highlight of this game, Karnov, right here. Balu. This guy has got, it. like, he just kind of has a little bit of everything, but not quite. I think the only thing he really lacks is, like, a super, like, fast, invincible reversal. But he's pretty yeah. much got every other, like, trademark tool that a top-tier character in this game in, would have. Look, in a game full of, like, really strong DPs, not having one is a pretty conspicuous weakness, but it's one that, like, 
is necessary and like is a part of the character's identity because yeah. Uh, yeah. he's very much like uh, again i think he's very much like dictator including like having a slide that you can use and just having really strong mix-ups that lead into heavy damage and having you know 100 kicks is basically like scissor kicks you know it's airborne and it's plus on block hey it's Do you the, think Bison V Trigger One Dash into let's, let's, Slide? Let's make that very clear. It's Champion Edition Scissor Kicks. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Uh, uh, Do you yeah. think like Street Fighter Five Bison V Trigger One Dash into Slide is like a Karnov teleport reference and like this really really lopsided way? Yeah. Man, that would be <laughs> crazy. Karnov <laughs> predicted everything. Just say it is Karnov. It's like The Simpsons did it of fighting games. This Karnov. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, I. Oh, honey, I actually unironically believe that. But yeah, no, he's yeah. got so much mix. This character's mix-ups are really, really good. That's something that I think uh, it's not emphasized here, even though it's mentioned, but like he is extremely hard to block consistently. So if he had like a really good DP, he would just hit you with that and then do stuff like that. It would be really messed up. Yeah. It's kind and of good. like and uh, there are moments you can see because uh, Balloon, you know, Balloon I think deserves like you could you could make a video just on balloon. I think people have made videos yeah, just on exists. balloon. People there have, is people a whole made Fire video, video on it actually. Yeah, exactly. It's it's such a notorious move uh, because again, it's invincible. You can steer it. It comes down as a cross up, and then you can do aerial attacks out of it. So you've got a move where you can you know throw it into pressure whenever you want, kind of, in order to uh, bait out you know anti airs or reversals. But obviously, you know, you do it too predictably, it's got answers. You can still anti air Karnov himself when he comes out of it. You can use a move to, like, escape the corner, and then you're back in neutral. Uh, no, just, just because it has, it has counters doesn't mean that it's uh, it's not cheap. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. no, the, thing really the, come on. the timing variation between the light and the heavy version is so drastic that you actually have to kind of guess what one they're doing. Yeah. Like you have to be and, really paying attention to their patterns and their habits on offense, and if they're mixing it up really well, you sometimes you just have to try and block it, and that's really hard. Yeah, I think and like being able have... to uh, escape the corner against him is also kind of like a privilege that most of the top tiers have. Like Ray can, if he's got you in the corner, you know Ray can thunder, Ray can just uh, dynamite tackles as he can dash out of it. Uh, but Wheel a kick. lot of low tier characters, yeah, wheel kick too. Wheel kick, you might even hit him as a bonus, but uh. A lot of other characters don't really have a good way out of the corner against him, especially if he's like drifting out. So you can, you know, you can catch the escape option with the uh, actual hitbox. Ray is so privileged being able to wheel kick and air throw against Balloon. Dude, yeah, the oh, air yeah, throw is I really nice. I didn't mention that. that he fucking had an air throw at all. I, I yeah. keep forgetting. Yeah, the air throw is really, really good. Yeah, uh, yeah Ray, no Ray has an air throw. Uh, Gene and Ryoko also have air throws. It's. I guess it's not that surprising that those are the characters that ended up with ones, but more so I mean, than like you can no just one take else. Take the frames of DDT and be like, yeah, let's put it here. Like, it yeah, Matt should have had an air throw. Even yeah, Matlock. I feel like very good. I'm kind of yeah. surprised uh, Young Me doesn't have one, but I guess she doesn't really need it. Uh, yeah. And you know, Marstorius, just because like as the Zangief of the game, he could have had an air throw, but I guess they didn't really know what to do well, with he it. He doesn't need any more throws. It's fine. Yeah. He's good. He's got a crouching throw uh, that he doesn't use. So does Ryoko, which we didn't we didn't really talk about that, but she has a crouching throw that she can transition into a hole that does a lot of damage, but again, you're not really going for that over uh, it can do grabs. A, a shitload of damage if they don't counter mash and then and yeah. you actually mash it, but so it's, uh, kind of back yeah. on back on Karnov. Yeah, so that balloon pressure is really, really unique. Also the the teleport pressure with the um do, knocking someone down, throwing a fireball, and then doing the teleport, which is essentially kind of a glitch, but also it's kind of his special move in the end. It kind of yeah. became a special move. If you, if you like, become good at it, you can kind of just use it as a special move. Teleport is like um, not... Yeah, it's not instant. It requires a little bit of setup in that you have to... Uh, you have to like whiff a jab and chain it into uh, a slide... And because the input for slide is just down it down uh, and heavy kick, you can do uh, so. You charge back, press jab, press down forward, heavy kick, and that'll do. That'll trigger hundred kicks and the slide, and it'll just cause him to slide to the other side of the screen. But that also means that it's got recovery, so it's not like he instantly teleports and can do whatever. So you yeah. can exploit it's that. A, it's not broken. 
Yeah, and I want to say just in general because I, I think we've overall people get an impression of our what we're saying about the tier list in this game. But I do hear people still say, and even at locals yesterday, oh, Karnov, I hear Karnov is really broken, and he is very, very strong and very good, but he does not run this game. He is not the unequivocal number one best character and i would say he's really really good and really fun and does a lot of cool stuff but i would say it's very important that we've noted that he doesn't have a ground reversal i think is one of his biggest weaknesses and i think a very necessary thing to keep him from being overpowered and stuff like that is characters big, not even weakness, not, yeah. not even necessarily the most top tiers but characters like mizuguchi can really lock you down um, and you don't really have a good answer to stuff like that. And so Mizuguchi can kind of do crazy Tatsu loops plus unblock stuff and then still challenge you with his DP um, if you ever really try and get cheeky with just trying to jab out of it. But because so Balloon is really, really crazy and overpowered and uh, can seem hard to get out of, but there's still a lot you can do to get out of it. And it's um, Karnov is one of those characters where if you can lock him down and you get kind of effective and solid enough with your pressure you can really take him out but if you play against someone and you really don't know how to play against him you can see very overwhelming and good and he is very good at all levels but he is not uh the ultimate end all be all character but it is his no, game. i think it's been uh, like a myth that's been spread that karnov is like the best in the game or that balloon breaks the game and um, maybe it's because of his prevalence a lot of people play him and so and see the move and and it's easy to see why it's very good but then they don't see further than that and they just uh, stay with that impression and they don't find the the counterplay and the people who so, find different ways so of i think the uh, the best comparison might be like uh, a lot of characters in these older games would be like the only character to have something in the game balloon is totally unique to karnov i think like a good comparison is a uh, wing nut and TMNT tournament fighters who's got an air dash and he's a really strong character but he's not the best in the game you know there's uh there's shark there's Raphael I think arguably shredder might be on that level so again he's another character who kind of is not the best in the game but he's still very top tier because he's got this unique game defining tool I think it's 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 funny you bring up TMNT tournament fighters because I think a good analogy is that like Balloon is not Karnov Balloon is not Armagon DP from TMNT Tournament Fighters, where it's like <laughs> a, a reversal that you can can't punish that just kind of breaks and defines the meta. Like it is a crazy invincible move that is also like plus on block, and you can chain over and over into it, kind of with his uh, standing light punch. Oh yeah, another unique thing about Karnov is that he can chain his his jumping jabs and cancel that into Balloon which is a unique thing that only he can do. But you he can't can actually, just throw... Oh, he can actually do two air normals, uh, too. He can jump up with a jab and then do, like, a heavy kick on the way down, too. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So, yeah, that's another very unique, strong thing about him. But you can't just do balloon all the time from the ground instantly, and it's going to get you out of every situation. Because even the jump startup is not going to allow you to do balloon as, like, a as like a grounded reversal like you would uh, DP like from a regular character and stuff like that. So Balloon it definitely has a lot more weaknesses than it looks like. It's a really good move, but it's not game-breaking. Balloon does not break this game. Yeah. That's my Balloon, All right. my balloon tin. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that's, that's good, though. Balloon. That's good. I think it's like, again, Balloon is just such a unique move that I think oh, you can just okay. keep talking about it. But uh, This might th honestly be, like, the most subtly funny character in the game. Because, like, the one thing that makes him, like, really messed up is just, it's, it's so funny to explain to people why the MASH move is fucked up. He's a Will It Kill character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He really there, is. You just, you just there's never like, know. There's a couple of layers to this, so uh, yeah, it's you've got your so standard mash move, and then you've got for some reason they've like implemented this A B C D version. You press all four buttons, and you get like a quicker mash move that only does like a few of the hits. And by it by itself, that would be really good. You know, it's plus on block. Uh, it's you know you can combo off of it. But for some ginormous. reason, you've got this uh, glitch where if you cancel into it, the third hit will do a ton of damage. And that gets even worse because uh, the first two hits can be crouched under by most of the cast. 
So if you're crouching against G and he combos into that, you're taking like almost half your health just off the initial <laughs> hands. So, it's so fucking awesome. The reason is that each hit counts towards the um, special move uh, counter, and if you do, if you go to the third hit from the beginning, it counts like as the full damage, right? It's not scaled from the previous uh, hits, right? So in that yeah. case, you're eating full damage of the combo unscaled. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, so that's why it does so much damage on Crouch. It's not like uniquely to Crouch. It's just like kind of a consequence of how the whole engine works. Uh, and then, um, you know, besides that, he's got, you know, he's got a fireball and a flash kick. We need, uh, we need that another clip. guile, the third guile, the third guile. <laughs> we need that clip of, of Clown dying. I I know it's it's ridiculous. It's we should have come with more. We should have come with some more clips. We can do that no, next I, I, time. I, I, no, I got it. Week. I'm gonna get it. Uh, I might nice. like. I will I, say um, <laughs> I, one I'll thing. I'll have to roll I that afterwards. Say, yeah. Go ahead. So Jean, I would say, I think is is kind of the best of all the guile charge fireball oh, yeah, type no, yeah. characters. I don't, and I would say, like we've mentioned before, the mash move. Also, the mash move. Uh, the, uh, Zazzy has the instant mash, but it's not another one of those things where it feels like a super modern idea and design mechanic that is surprising that you would see it in such an old game and that you haven't seen it since. It's definitely very broken, but it definitely see, it's one of those things. But also, it helps Jean as a charge character because they have such a good move, good special move that they can do without charge. So they're one of the few charge characters who can be kind of effective in these kind of scramble situations without charge, simply because they have this move. And that move that they have is such a... Uh, can really turn a game around in, with its kind of will it killness and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty much a good summary. Of the two. It yeah. does require some collaboration from the other, because it requires them to be ignorant of the fact that you should take a certain stance when fighting this character. You should not yeah. just automatically crouch every combo. Um, you should know when you're at the right distance to, to not die from the, from the hands, right? So it requires some knowledge. I think he's one of the biggest knowledge checks in that, in that regard, right? Because if you mash and you down back your combos like you would in any other fighting game against Jean, well, that's, <laughs> that's just getting you killed. I mean... Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even really think about that. So that's a thing. Like in an, in a lot of other games, it'd be like, oh, if you caught them crouching in that situation, then you would just have to eat that damage. And it's like, oh, just don't get hit crouching. But in this game, if you know you can switch back to standing, then you can ultimately kind of get out of it and deal with right. it. So yeah, that's another thing where this is a character that's good, but you're going to have to work more to get that damage and at a higher level it's going to get harder and harder especially against people who know how to deal with their stuff yeah and we haven't talked about it but gene is probably the also it is the game actually does say gene even though that's not right i don't know someone someone made a mistake there but his hidden move run they fucking call him jean in the first one that's the point i know that's really it's funny. insane <laughs> oh really that's funny <laughs> i don't know that was the one thing they missed on this game. No, but, they got uh, yeah. Marstrius. <laughs> Marstrius. <laughs> oh, true. But yeah, yeah his the, hidden move is bizarre. Is speaking English, but oh yeah, his hidden move with the case, crazy yeah. ass box. That's the only way I can describe it. It's 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 huge, and it doesn't knock down, so it's like unsafe on hit. So you pretty much you don't want to use this unless you're like sealing out the round. But because it's so invincible and fast, it's actually not a bad option. It it's so weird. They should have made it a forward night. charge, though. Forward charge. Yeah, before Undernight. Before <laughs> Undernight. Or like Arcana Heart, which I'm pretty sure had that. The, like this guy. Yeah, this is like. The you Simpsons know, did it. F 15 years before like any of those anime okay. games knew what they were doing. I mean, Suiko Enbu invented Wall Street. And like did half East, of the hit states. Did it. Half, <laughs> half of the fucking like hit states in Blaze Blue are in Suiko Enbu. I'm just, I'm just saying. Did Data East also like invent Marvel fighting games? Is that what we're going with? We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Anyways, <laughs> what we got? All right, young up me? next, uh, Young Me. Yeah. Now, I think a lot of people might like take issue with the difficulty rating right off the bat, but I think Golden oh. Shades has been like an advocate for uh, Young Me's general difficulty as a character, and I think this is also like a learning curve as much as it is like a uh, peak difficulty. 
because her zoning is entirely like tiger knee fireballs, which is going to be pretty hard to learn. Exactly. I, at least every special move that she has is like a, like some sort of um, barrier of entry. First of all, her zoning is depending on you doing your knees over and over and over, right? And you have to try to not mess up or else you're going to jump forward. And that's, that's a big deal, right? Um, her mash move requires you to mash uh, many times. And that can be difficult, especially to, in combos, right? Uh, her DP is a weird motion, and even if you want to do her her wall jump, right? If you don't cu cut the startup with the with a jumping light trick, you're going to you know you're not going to take advantage of her escaping options as much, right? So everything that she does um, requires like you to understand the game, understand the character, understand the matchups, right? And it's like you're not taking advantage of her if you're not using her tools to their fullest, right? And she doesn't have anything on the ground that's safe. So also you have to be created on that area, right? It's not like... Yeah, you, can... you don't have like... You can't cancel sweep into fireball with this character. So that's like a fundamental no. thing that every other zoner relies on that she doesn't have. Uh, and otherwise, like, you know, she looks a bit like Chun-Li, but her move kit, her move set doesn't really work like that at all. She's even got the wall jump, which again... The wall jump, uh, it's got a bit of startup, which is invincible, which is pretty interesting in its own right. But if you hit, like, uh, I think you, like, when you hit away from the wall and you hit a button, that starts the wall jump. And then if you hit towards the wall and a button again, it'll skip the wall jump startup and it'll uh, kind yeah, of rocket her off the jump. Instantly. Yeah, and that makes her movement a lot more unpredictable when she's in the corner, which is something no other character really has besides, I guess, Karnoff teleport out the corner. But it's different. Yeah, so basically every tool she has is depending on execution and you being able to do it consistently and finding the right scenarios to do it. If not, you just, you know, you are going to become predictable and she's not very good uh, when she's backed up against the corner. So that, and that's it. I think she's a very difficult character to learn. Even when you, when you know what to do and the game plan, it's very difficult to always have uh, the execution to pull off all of her things like constantly, right? Mm -hmm. I think her five difficulty, uh, her five stars are very well earned. And when you get down to it, it's like this is uh, another character that kind of her position on the tier list is weird because I think a lot of Japanese tier lists will put her up like I've seen people put her in like top three, and that's very surprising to us because I I think for us like because people kind of favor offense over here it's it's kind of hard to see her zoning uh in the long term as being as strong as it is theoretically she's very powerful but the problem is actually in practice uh, doing her things constantly right uh, yeah and like securing that lead when you start out like if if someone lands a first hit against you as young me that's quite an uphill battle yeah even theoretically she has some very hard matchups i think ray is difficult Zazi can be very difficult too, right? So it's not like all fun and games when you even when you can do all of her things. I wish mm -hmm. she just had like one more like ground based special move to like buffer into. Like they gave her this this double kick thing in the the Mizuguchi sequel that came out on Super Famicom. Like if she just had like something else to like oh. buffer into, that'd be that'd be nice. Also in also in that game they gave her a dive kick that cancels into itself. And you can chain it like ten times in a row on some they characters. Actually, yeah. They actually let you do her air fireball on the ground in that game. I don't know if they let you that too. Do yeah, it. yeah. That see, uh, Mizuguchi game is uh, it's very weird. I think they it's, made it's her straight fucked up, up in Suiko though in the Saturn I th port. I, I think you can try that. I think you can call uh, yeah. I think you can call Fighters History Mizuguchi Kusoge at that point. It's just oh, it is. there's there's a lot of infinites. There's a lot of like. There's some weird bug that will like cause your uh, chains to not have pushback, which leads to infinites. It's really weird. Can I mention uh, that her her, oh, yeah. her Smiko Embu design is is nothing like this, by the way? And they just gave her a completely invincible command run, which I'm not lying. That is just Zaz that. Oh, you know, just like Zazzy. <laughs> uh, yeah, except which, uh, you know, if it goes into overheads and lows and throws and you know. You know, which is a character we're going to talk about now. Zazie, oh Zazie is 
one of a kind, you know? I don't think you can find a character like Zazie in any other game. Like, the immediate comparison he draws is probably the Boxer, because you've got this forward-moving reversal, because he has dashing, or ducking, technically, which is an invincible command dash. And you can cancel that into Hellfire, which is his reversal, which is just huge hitbox, uh, minus four on block. So if you space it out, then you can't really punish it. Yeah, Zazi, I think, is the only character I would say in this game that you can play with a with a flowchart, basically. Like, in the corner, most characters don't have a lot of options. If you can do dash Hellfire constantly, repeatedly, over and over, it's difficult. But if you can do that, uh, many characters just don't have a lot of escape options in that scenario. Hey, we haven't talked about the uh, the problem with uh, ABCD macros, have we? <laughs> yeah, oh, we haven't. I touched on like Gene having ABCD hands. This is also something yeah. Zazzy shares. It's not quite as dire as Gene's situation because uh, he doesn't get the massive damage off it because his hands naturally hits crouchers, so it'll scale down a little bit. But it, uh, you know, even with the scaling, it's, hands damage is pretty high. It still gives him like higher damage than most of the cast. His his instant hands is more useful as like a, a neutral tool. Like it you is, can just yeah. like you just cancel it off normals and just keep walking forward. And you know, there's there's people online that will 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 take advantage of the fact that you can set A B C D to to one button and then just use one button hands for for Zazi and Gene. And that's uh, that's I I don't think that's cool at all because that's not something that was I mean when when they were making this game in 1994 obviously they were intending it for use on the on the Neo Geo cabinet with four buttons and the difficulty in the move is based around hitting four buttons together like you have to actually commit to it so just having this this one dedicated button used for it like totally totally negates the purpose of the move but unfortunately it's one of those things that's like. Uh, I mean, there are ways to like check inputs on replays, but when you're playing against somebody for the first time, like you might not know if they're if they're using these macros or not. But that's it, like he he doesn't need instant instant hands. Like he's already an amazing character in this game. But yeah, I just I don't like that shit. Yeah, and, and then uh, like I on mean, top of that, like Zazzy, it's not just his specials. He's got some of the best normals in the game. He's got a really ignorant standing light kick, which can be mm -hmm. whiff punished, but it's not like it's a light kick, so you can't do that on reaction. You've got to really commit to calling it out. And then at that the point, box on that thing is yeah. At that point, yeah, he's, you know, he's in range to just hellfire you in the first place. It's like okay, I've heard people go like, "When you can whiff punish," you're like, "When is that whiffing?" Like, <laughs> when you get out, like I. I have never seen that like whiff constantly. Like I've seen it whiff a couple times, maybe, but I've never seen it like it's huge. Yeah, and some characters can't really take advantage of that because because it's so huge, they'll be too far away to combo it off it, right? So it's like yeah, you you stopped one option of his of a character who has like probably the most like broad toolkit because he's got hands, he's got hellfire, he's got some really good normals. Oh, and did I mention hands is disjointed? <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, like it's also just huge. Yep. I feel like when I think of Zazzy, I think of a character who can just kind of do whatever they want. And they're scary really at all times in most ranges. Well, you're going to want to be up close with Zazzy. That's really the thing. But you just have so many ways to get in and easily start your pressure and stuff like that. Um, that is very, very scary. I feel like he still definitely has a decent amount of weaknesses, and you kind of just have to call him out uh, when you really think he's going to do something. If you think he's going to dash, you kind of got to throw the dash or sweep it before it happens, and so, or like while during the kind of vulnerable period and stuff like that. But then they can always mix up the timing, and because they're late canceling and stuff like that, they can just delay the cancel a little bit or do a different move. And pretty much all of their special moves are strong and effective and scary in a in a short range, wow. like a one to, in like a one to two character range. So I would honestly, from like a more top tier perspective, I hear it's funny that I hear from a casual perspective like um, people say that oh Karnov is so empowered. When I talk to more experienced and top tier players i usually hear more complaints about zazzy i usually hear zazzy as like it's because th there's this thing right um usually when you get to the top you learn to punish many things 
uh, you learn all of the tech that you need to combat certain characters. But the thing with Zazie is that if he plays his cards correctly, it's very easy to punish him even when he does things quote unquote incorrectly. Like Dash Hellfire, technically minus, but it's not that easy to punish and it can be very frustrating, right? Because you know how to do it, but uh, sometimes it just happens that he, he does another Hellfire, you fail to punish it, and you are dizzy, and now you lose because you fail to punish one time. So he's that kind of character, right? Yeah, uh, Hellfire is also remarkably good at hitting weak spots because it reaches all the way to the ground and reaches like pretty much to like the character's head height almost on that first hit. So like if he combos into it, he's probably getting a dizzy hit. And that means against like uh, even top tiers with hard to hit weak spots like uh, Lee, I guess Gene to a lesser extent, he still hits that weak spot no problem. Mm -hmm. I was also kind of thinking about as I was using Zazzy yesterday, like how cheap the input for Hellfire is. Not really cheap, but having a back, like a quarter circle down where it's like uh, yeah, back down back four, four, down four, four one two. You can kind of just do a standing block and then very easily roll that into a Hellfire to do. Uh, yeah, a very quick anti-air. It's uh, I guess a bit more difficult from down back, but just to have a standing. Input, same input that uh, Mizuguchi has for his DP. It's really weird. They like had three different inputs they considered for DPs because uh, uh for Lee it's quarter circle forward for some reason, and then you've got yeah. the weird input that Sam Chai and uh, Young Me use, and then you've got this, and you've got wheel kick backwards fireball. Kick. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a real cheap one because it's like you can you know do it, you can walk back and wait for them to yep. actually confirm that they've jumped. Actually, with this game, you can do all of the motions and end in down back if you want, right? Because you can end wherever you want, say for a few characters like Clown. Most of the time you can end, for example, wheel kick in down back and that way um, gets a better chance, right? If, mm -hmm. if you don't get the move, at least you block, right? As a reversal, I mean, in this case. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the reversal game is pretty much, it's it's much like ST. You've got throw to worry about, and you've got reversal to worry about. And the throw it's range in this game is so good. Possible for specials. Also, Zazzy, I feel, is a little more scary as a grappler, kind of also with his uh, command dash, where it, he, his grab doesn't do a lot of damage and stuff, but it's a good way to kind of uh, mix up your pressure because you're going to be able to get people to against you a lot if you do a lot of hands or if you're throwing out a lot of hellfires and people he can gonna... cross up with every single jumping attack based on like yeah, the, the that's matchup. True. <laughs> yeah that's, that's wild I did not that's know really that. funny you can cross, cross up with jumping jab too. for for whatever reason yeah, yeah. but so I, still, I think i think their uh, their difficulty is good to note so they're a very strong effective character but you're kind of really going to have to know how to play the game to really get the most out of Zazzy and to be able to beat experienced players because experienced players are really going to be able to call you out if you're not on your shit um, with your cancels and just trying to be in their face at all time with the serious pressure. But if you get really, really good at Zazzy, you're going to be very, very effective and get a lot of mileage out of it. Yep. Uh, all right, I think that's basically it. We haven't talked about his his hidden move, but like that, it's not too yes, useful whatever. in his grand <laughs> scheme of things. I don't want to talk about it. It's a funny it's, move. It's like good, but it's like it it's, really pales in comparison to the other three. It's the other uh, three are just, should have been a hidden move. It's most notable for <laughs> like being a funny voice line, the Dersh, you know. Dersh, yeah, in a game of very funny voice lines. I do though. technically have to I do leave a little dirt. early because it's late. Sure, well, yeah. not late, but I have work very early. I did not expect well, this to take so end. long, but I think we had a good time. So thanks for hanging yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Thank yeah. you for having me. I hope people. I, I hope people enjoyed it. Yeah, and this is a good. I think this is a good thing because this is a very uh, effervescent and kind of long, long-lasting game. So I think this will be a good thing. To, I think there's a great time to pick up Karnovs, and also I think it's a game that's going to be around for a while, and people are always going to play because it's really course, unique. Yeah. It's really ahead of its time and a man of its way, and it really does a lot of things that uh, another, a lot of games haven't done. And 
it seems like they haven't done since. And just because it's so easy and accessible, you can play it on pretty much any uh, computer. You could just play it on Fightcade. And I really do like uh, this kind of Car November thing. Is that like I do like this game, but I don't always play it all the time. But November does. I'm like November comes close. I'm like, oh yeah, Car November. I should play some Car It's the reason then, for the season. It's the reason for I, the season. Yeah, just, and it it gets you in the. And thank you very much to Polar Bear for inviting me and all of us to have this because this is fun. And uh, right, like it's always this. fun to play this game. But I think now more than ever. Especially in the in the car November season, uh, it's always nice to meet new people. And if you want to get into this game, I think the community is more than willing to help new players grow. Right? And so, uh, with regards to resources and help, I think now is the best time ever to to get into this game. Yeah, it's both like there's been recent discoveries in how the game works, like the whole weak spot healing thing, and the uh, wick he's been definitely stepping up. A pretty new player recently, uh, Yuri Best Girl, has been like picking up Karnov and actually oh, yeah. writing See, some useful matchup notes. With me all the yeah. time. We play uh, Lee versus Karnov all the time. Yep. Uh, at this point, I just want to play that, that clip that T linked me. I'm going to try and hook that up to <laughs> here. And then uh, yeah. that's going to be pretty much it. All right. Yeah. Definitely check out the wiki, uh, the Super Combo and Zoom in wiki are great for this game and a great oh, resource yeah. to learn and to remind because sometimes you'll just need to brush up because it is like riding a bike where if you play it once. So yeah, let's get some footage. Let's... Right. And check out right. the Discord because that's a very useful oh, yeah, resource. Yeah, check out the Discord. Right. Let me switch this just so we can, we can all share this. Uh, hold on. Okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cap it off with this. Poor clown. This is a good, two, tar, good, nice two-hour discussion about Karnovs. All right, here we go. You know, it's like Jaws. You're just like you're waiting for it to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. What if you have to the height? I. God, I love watching like tournament footage from oh, Japan, oh, and they all just fucking lose it. So <laughs> yeah, great. He's like the Gonzalez super from Dunkin' 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 It's a great game, but it happens oh, so often with this character. Very glad that we don't have to play uh, per quarter for this game anymore. Yeah, <laughs> right. Different era. All right, that's gonna be it. I think. See you later. I'm gonna look for someone to raid real quick. I think uh, Joe P. Real is playing uh, some stuff on Fight K. Probably Street Fighter the movie right now. Shout out to him. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm gonna hop off. Oh, nice talking to everybody. This was fun. Yeah, thanks All for right. having us. Oh, yeah. yeah this was you. so worth it. I think this is going to be great for the game. I hope people enjoy it.